every time, but like realistically speaking, it's much more likely somebody's gonna watch on YouTube. Yeah. Hi YouTube. Hi, no, personally. fuck those guys. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, what goblins are people too? <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, what? Mod goblins. Oh, I thought you said hobgoblins. I was like, either obviously yes or obviously no. There's not really a middle ground on that. But <laughs> I said what goblin. Yeah, I understand now, and I definitely disagree now. <laughs> All right, so wow. let's let's get into today's session before I slander our audience any further. Last week, you guys made your way back to the Temple of Mustatara, and you, you know, then did some wandering around. You had a weird encounter with a halfling that was painting or something, scribbling, notebook. You thought it was painting, didn't really get a chance to see, then vanished. And you also uh, had an interesting encounter with somebody who appeared to be a follower of Semka. And all of this happened while you were looking for a map maker that you do not appear to be able to find. You guys are currently just in a street. If only we had a map. <laughs> right? It would have been yeah. very useful, <laughs> wouldn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. So, what are you guys doing? Should we go to Stone Spire and ask the students there then? Oh, yeah, we wanted to do that. Oh. So. Does anybody have anything against that? Steve, do you want to uh, first bring back your groceries? I've got a lot of them. Yeah, I do have a lot of them. Um, yeah. Uh... We, if we could quickly stop by and just drop them off and then maybe we could stop and eat now and I could prepare it when we get back and then we could head to Stone Spire. What time is it, sorry, in the day? Is it an appropriate time to be suggested lunch? I, yeah, I think it's about lunchtime though. I, I, I think that's what I said just the last time. We cut off. What's that? Yeah, yeah, I think that actually is what it is. So, so you guys go to get a lunch. Are, are we role playing lunch? Is that what we're doing? You wanna? <laughs> I mean, I'm kind of interested to see what the elephant man makes. So. Yeah, I'm interested yeah. to know what he makes. I'm just curious as to whether we're gonna go through the rigmarole of eating it. All of it. Yeah. So, so, so I mean, it's a, a recipe from his hometown, and mm -hmm. he might not remember it so well, you know. <laughs> Okay. And it might not go so well. They're complicated ingredients. Well, we'll get to that then. It's, uh, I, I now have a much better idea of how today's session is going to go. So you guys are currently stood in Gadalad, which is a ward of Jotlaranda. It's the upmarket area, the, the Beverly Hills, the whatever that number is, the zip code for Beverly Hills. 90210? I don't remember. But, that sounds uh, familiar. I mean, doesn't it? But also, so does every <laughs> other string of five numbers. <laughs> three one five three five. That sounds familiar. That's a good point. Three one one four one five nine. No, I haven't heard that one. <laughs> that was pi. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so what are you guys doing? You walking back to the the dwarf's helm? You're gonna cook there or? Where, where are you? Where are you obtaining a kitchen from, Steve? Uh, <laughs> can I do that at the dwarf's home? Or I don't know. I, Let's find I out. Just need a fire. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Okay, so you're heading back to the dwarf's home. As long as everyone's in agreement. I think everyone right now is just going to follow Steve. Yep. That's... So <laughs> he has that gravitational pull to him. It's it, it, it's also just a matter of like these streets are actually pretty <laughs> crowded, so and 
he just like there's a lot of room behind him to walk where there isn't room elsewhere in the street. So yeah, like it's like kind of natural to follow him. Stream. <laughs> so it's like following an ambulance through New York. So you guys are making your way back to the dwarf's helm. You cross over the bridge back into Maranao. You're heading across this uh, this center island back in the direction you came. And uh, <laughs> the kids there again. I was just about to ask if anybody wants to make a perception check to see if the halflings are back. Cool. Uh, that's a dirty twenty. A dirty twenty. Well, that's All a twelve. Right. Maybe not use that dice. <laughs> uh. One second. Uh, you said a dirty twenty. Yes. Yeah, the 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 halflings are back on their stools with their notebooks. They interested in us again. Uh, make an insight check. <laughs> Not one. Make it a free with my modifier, but not one. So. <laughs> So yeah, uh sure. Yeah, I don't know. They're all heads down industrious. You walk a little bit further and you even spot the exact one that you spoke to, whose name I definitely remember and I can definitely find it in the legend keeper somewhere right here. <laughs> definitely. Oh, I found it. I can't remember if she told her your name, so <laughs> her name, so. <laughs> but the kids are back, but, you know, seem to just be doing their thing. We're a strange sight. I, you know, I don't think we should make much of it. Steve, on the back of that Dirty 20, you also notice a little, uh, like, a, just a, a slow creeping movement on one of the roofs to your right hand side. Can I can I take a like like turn my head and actually look in that direction? Like sure, make give, a perception like, check. Like, yeah. Like just targeting specifically at this one spot. Seventeen. Seventeen. Yeah, uh there is a, a shape. Um it looks like it looks like two triangles kind of creeping along the guttering. Like behind it, like there's something behind it, and there's these two two stone-like triangles moving behind this guttering. Like, does everyone see what those those triangles up there? That it's I don't quite know what it is, but and uh, they know? disappear. They did. Like not 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 like fate like like they they like slide below the guttering and then, you know you you can't see whether they're still there or what happened to them or whatever but they slid out of view. Um, do you want me to strike the rooftop with lightning? No, no, not in this crowded area. That uh, the crowds are I starting just... to thin out as you're walking. This doesn't seem like a good idea to just strike something. I have no clue about. But think of the lesson you would learn, whether it was a good idea or not. <laughs> Current hypothesis: bad idea. Yeah, let's test it. <laughs> test it. <laughs> Is it really a bad idea? I mean, that's what an hypothesis is for. You need to that's test what science it. is for, man. Yeah. Just a lot of repeated, repeating bad ideas to see if something different happens. Yeah, we're just that, all scientists that here. Is, uh, that is the scientific method in a nutshell. I think. This will happen. Test it. Okay, it's happened. Does it continue to happen? <laughs> I think people will get upset if I strike the roof with light. Will they continue to be upset if I repeatedly strike the roof with lightning? Well, then it's just weird weather, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, what are you guys doing? Try to run after them if you want me to. Quick. 
maybe if you could get up that high and just look along the gutter, they were behind it. Sure. Try to get up. All right. So it's easy enough. You uh, you don't need to make a check or anything with your monkness. Just takes you, uh, uh, you know, about twenty seconds or something. Scale up the side of this building. There's a there's a handy awning that provides a nice foothold. You grab onto a ledge. It's very very uh, Assassin's Creed, you know. <laughs> and uh, you swing yourself up onto the roof. Are you trying to be stealthy? Um, sure. Okay, roll stealth. Eleven. Yeah. Natural two. One of those shutters that you grab hold of, uh, just to just for a moment, just to steady yourself, kind of makes a creaking noise and then slams against the uh, the thing. You nearly catch your fingers between it and the wall, but you're just able to pull your hand back in time. But it makes quite a loud noise. Like, Gosh. Whoops. <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> um, and then you get to the top and you you peek over over the top. Uh, make a perception check for me. See if you can spot anything out of the ordinary. Like this last one. Nope. It's also a natural two. Oh a dear. Seven. A seven. It was a different guy. Uh, there's nobody on this roof. There's nobody here. Hello? Can't see anyone. <sighs> Gotta stay up here a little and just walk a little along. Yeah, sure. I mean, you're just on a rooftop. Um, there, there seems to be some kind of a, a hatch going down. It's a, it's a flat roof, um, but most of the surrounding buildings uh, have peaked uh, roofs. So this one, quite a good choice if you are trying to not be spotted and to keep an eye on somebody on the street. But no, there's um, a couple of like gargoyles-like statues up here. But other than that, there's nothing here. Well, I go back down. All right. Okay. Well, really see anyone, but uh, it's definitely a convenient roof if anybody wanted to watch it or someone else. I look around if there's anybody else interested. No. Interesting <laughs> no. No. Ah. You spot a halfling, sort of put the head back down as you look in their direction. the most interesting characters on this street so i'm guessing they were spying on us whoever they were wow that is arrogant but yeah it seems plausible <laughs> <laughs> to All be right. fair or know. they were spying on that halfling over there <laughs> walking around with with a huge elephant man like pretty much the center of attention I mean, I guess the upside for you guys is that anytime you're not with the giant elephant man, nobody will remember who you are. Mm -hmm. I mean, everyone, I mean, you know, we, we try not to draw attention to the elephant in the room. It's <laughs> <laughs> a fair point. That was so bad. Why am I laughing? <laughs> I, even I didn't laugh at that one, and I like puns. <laughs> I really tried not to laugh. <laughs> you failed miserably. <laughs> uh, sometimes you just need to make a terrible, terrible joke. <laughs> so, what are you guys doing now? Should we continue back to the dwarf stand? Like, yes, I understand what's going on. Yes, we can have some lunch and then really find out. All right, so you can continue on your way, make your way back onto the uh, the island that. Uh, the dwarf helm is actually on, and you make yourself some lunch. Um, make a performance check, I guess. <laughs> With uh, I'll let you use dexterity as the base. So if you're proficient in performance, dexterity performance. That's an eighteen. An eighteen. Ooh. Yeah, it's pretty damn good. He knows his stuff. Show. Yeah. yeah. What, what what are you making? Tell us. <laughs> so yeah, he's all hungry. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm doing is I'm 
slicing this steak into very thin pieces and I'm only going to sear them for around 30 seconds on a really intense flame. I'm going to take them away straight after that. I'm going to take the oils out of that pan. I'm going to mix it in with the vegetables and I'll show the assortment of crazy like purple, pinks, all kind of crazy looking vegetables. And I'm going to quickly fry those vegetables and I very quickly chop it all down whilst it's cooking and throw the steak back in. Um, maybe have prepared a sauce of some sort and yeah yeah enjoy everybody it's a it's a great uh, dish that's been passed down in my family for years that's amazing thank you steve you're very welcome and um i'm gonna pass out some tea as well big bowl. Tea. big bowl <laughs> Live scenes from Berlin, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you just eat. Ev you just pile everything up and then eat it like it's corn on the cob. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alison will start eating it like very, very carefully. But then quick, but then quickly realize that no, this is this is good, and just wolf it down. All right, as a as a wolf, you wolf it down, or as as a uh... <laughs> as <Alison. laughs> watch, I do not want to into wolf just to eat. <laughs> so everyone eats the food. Hello, I was considering so... it, but no. <laughs> Imagine like taking one bite, being like. Oh yeah, this is actually good. Wild shape into wolf and wild, wild, wild. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So everyone eats the food? Mm -hmm. Alright. Everyone make a con save. Why? I, I knew I knew he should have oh. seen that coming as soon as he asked the question. What is happening? Uh natural twenty for twenty-four. Nice. Natural one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's land in between that. <laughs> I, I've got a twenty-one. Then eleven. Uh, then don't you guys have a plus from uh, Steve, or is that not yet? I don't remember when Paladins get that's that. That's level six. Oh, level. okay. Then never mind. We're one level off, damn it. So, uh, yeah, no, I just thought it'd be funny to make you guys do a con save. Yeah, the UI changed. Yeah, roll twenty. Roll twenty. I feel slightly sick because I ate too. Much. <laughs> <laughs> it was really like good, sick. and you didn't know when to stop, and that was what the natural one was. Alism, uh, it's really good, and you didn't need to stop. <laughs> uh, like, uh, uh, logically, I sh I should just be in pain in the curled up in a corner somewhere, but no, I'm fine. You might actually be two inches taller now. <laughs> <laughs> You know that would be a significant that would be a significant increase. <laughs> yeah. All right, so you guys finish lunch. What are you doing now, <laughs> guys? I think I need help. <laughs> Way too much. I'm so tired. Uh, you could uh, rest on my shoulders whilst we walk over to uh, what's oh, yeah, please. Stone Spoiler. Oi. Should we head over there now? Um, a... Yes, I do have some questions for. Ooh. All right, pick up Severin. So you guys <laughs> taking a gondola? Oh. Where are we walking? So here. So How do I do in a gondola? <laughs> Don't suppose up in elevation. Uh, you have already been in one. Okay. It, it was a bit terrifying. It, it was a bit, yeah, <laughs> it, it was worrying, but you, you were sat dead in the middle and everyone kind of spread out around you and that was fine. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, Why not? I could take you. Good water. If you don't want to pay for a gondola. Oh. Do you have a boat? No, but I can 
turn into an animal that can swim. You can support Steve on your back. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should find out. It would be a, an I interesting mean... lesson. <laughs> Be fun. All right. Let let me just have a look in the monster <laughs> <laughs> to see if I can find something ideally huge sized with the swim speed. Lord now he. Th th this is just a classic <laughs> druid problem, isn't it? Like now he's yeah. looking it up. Yeah. Didn't I, I, I was, to him to look it up before looking, he suggested I was, it. <laughs> I was looking while while I suggested it, but. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, I think I've got you. Uh, don't worry. Uh, so uh, we we want a beast. Uh, it's a beast that's big. We want a swim, swim speed. speed. What's a whale's challenge? I kill the whale is too much. <laughs> we need a size. Kill the whale is uh, CO three. I can only do CO one. Uh. You could do a giant crocodile, giant shark. Oh, you can't because CR limitations. Huge giant crab. Oh yeah, sorry, CR limitations. Oh yeah, then you can't do anything. <laughs> uh, not huge size. There are a number of large size creatures I can do. Uh, like a giant octopus. <laughs> yeah, you could do a giant octopus. I mean, it kind of feels like my thing, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> the bear isn't in this world. That's, That's what you me. think. Yeah, <laughs> you come to knowing you, Robert probably is in this world. Oh, why, if, if, if all my favorite characters are in this world. Yeah, Robert is somewhere. Be careful, everyone. There might this be a Robert coming. Is a hit. You could do giant toad as well if you wanted. Yeah, uh, it was a giant toad, a giant octopus. I was thinking of. Or two-headed crocodile. Ooh, I don't have the stats for that. That's from uh, Infernal Machine Rebuild, whatever that is. Good question. I am not entirely sure. Actually, I think I know what it is. I think it is an um, Adventures League publication. Yeah, I suspect it probably is. It also sounds like the kind of campaign where you're going up against a mad scientist who, when he thinks, I'm going to play with my action figures, it takes a soldering iron and a pair of pliers. Yep. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna be right back. Yes, I will turn into a giant toad. The octopus has uh, more strength. <laughs> I know, but I think it's more likely that I've seen a giant toad than a giant octopus. <laughs> I mean, is it? Honestly, yes, it is more likely. Yeah. So, Alzum turns into a giant toad, which prompts a what the from around the corner of the street as somebody just wheels around on their heel and just goes back the way they came. <laughs> We're a soul group. Yeah. So now you're an elephant man with a giant toad next to you, who, which is somehow a a bigger than the elephant. Yeah, larger than you are. <laughs> I love the sounds that you make. <laughs> it's so immersive. Look, if you play, if you're playing a moon druid, yeah, you've got to get into the sounds. animal sounds. You're doing it. Wrong. You should have heard my tentacle sounds, man. Oh God, no! I should not have. Oh, stop! No! Oh. <laughs> uh, welcome to welcome to druid AS, uh, ASMR. <laughs> Oh, I hated that. No! It's just so slurpy, you know? Stop! <laughs> it's not even like... It's not even like tentacles actually make that much noise. IRL. It depends on how much they're touching things, Trip. Yeah, that's true. Oh, my god. Whether or not they are able to. I hate this. <laughs> Shelly's gone, so I figure this is a good way to fill the time. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, it's a terrible also... way. I'm, I'm I mean, still could... listening right now. I'm just waiting for a call. Oh, gotcha. Uh, <laughs> sorry. That's yeah, all right. I'm, so, I mean, we, you could also do pigeon. 
Is that a pigeon or is that Mario? <laughs> no, I'm trying to do the the you know the giant flying things in Avatar. Oh. Ah. <laughs> the what? You, you've you know the film Avatar? Oh, the film, right? Ah. I I thought you were talking about yeah, not the, the not show. the very good animated series. <laughs> yeah. I mean that's where that's where my my mind my mind my, my, my work. Because the giant flying things in that go. <laughs> anyway, so you guys uh have a giant toad in the street. There are people pointing. There are people looking like they should be running away. They are taking a cue from the people standing closest to the giant toad in that those people are not panicking. But they're still uncomfortable with this situation. What are you doing now? You'll have to teach me how to do that. That's rather impressive. It's a stone spire. I'm a, I, and I'm an offer to climb up. You're going to oh. mount the toad. Yes. Yes. It is not comfortable having an elephant in uh, an elephant humanoid in uh, plate armor on your back, Alison. What do you only have chainmail? Uh, do you only have chainmail, Steve? Chainmail. Oh, my mistake. It's not uncomfortable having a giant elephant man in <laughs> chainmail on your back, Alison. <laughs> I mean, I mean, uh, the chainmail is softer, so you're less sharp. Edges yeah, but it catches get... more. Yeah. You don't have you don't have the smoothest skin as a giant toad. No, I, I don't imagine it's too comfortable sitting on top of a giant toad either. I, I don't imagine anybody is comfortable with this situation, including the people watching, except maybe Featherin. <laughs> <laughs> so, you guys, we're, uh, we're what, what is everybody else doing <laughs> to get to Stone Spire? I mean, while this is going on, <laughs> I'll just look unexpectedly and just open my mouth wide. Because uh, giant toads have a funny ability called swallow. Oh my! So you know, could potentially carry someone else as well. Uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, Shelley. Hi. Yeah. So, um, all right. So, are you going to? Uh... You're going to swallow one of your t party members? Well, it, well, it's like pulled in a mouth. Toads have rather large mouths. It is a large mouth. This thing is like yeah. seven feet tall. <laughs> and you know, tall is not really where toads shine yeah. in size. Frogs can actually open their mouths wider than the size of their body. This is an important point to mo mention. So, this giant toad opening its mouth is... It's a lot. I still on Steve's shoulders. Who's now on, <laughs> <laughs> on the giant thing? Yeah, I forgot what you are. But, um, uh, giant toad. Toad, yes. This is cool! <laughs> like this! <laughs> Hello! So I'm, I'm, guessing Asta, I'm guessing Asta gets the time loop. Gets the prime sitting location in the toad's mouth. <laughs> yeah, mean, he's not. He's not doing that. <laughs> has has not noticed all this yet? <laughs> <laughs> as does just staring off into middle distance. Turns around, giant toad. He he has noticed, uh, and he's yeah. He he. D it did take him a while, but he's pretending like he noticed from the beginning. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, okay, right. Um, he doesn't. He does. He does not want to go inside of the mouth so he's just staring at you at this point the mouth is open <laughs> uh, I'll offer him a trunk to climb up yeah <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna look he's gonna have a very disturbed look and <laughs> take the trunk Okay, so explain to me how you guys are arranging yourselves around this giant toad. <laughs> For now, it sounds like 
feather in and <laughs> On top of Steve, on top of the giant toad. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Feather in on top of Steve, on top of the giant toad. And what's Asda doing? Uh, this is climbing. Climbing what? <laughs> the trunk. Of, of well, your trunk. <laughs> yeah. To get on the toad also. I'm yes. Steve can hold on to it. Alism, make a strength saving throw as your toad. <laughs> Uh, this is gonna be... <laughs> um, well, that's a four. Great. Ooh. Uh, you're you're a giant toad. You're not the most robust of creatures. <laughs> the guy kind of just flattened at this point. So, uh, yeah, you you just squish down, and this is uncomfortable. Like very uncomfortable. <laughs> You can't move. I, I imagine as much. You are, you are currently prone and restrained. <laughs> All right, Alison, let's go. <laughs> just, just as I'm gonna moving the legs. No, yeah, as you, you, move. At this point, as Steve, you, you like a horse. At, at this point, Steve, your feet are basically touching the ground on either side of <laughs> the toad. <laughs> Uh, I don't think this is going to work, then. Asder, get in the mouth. <laughs> um, he's going to do something instead. Mm-hmm. Uh, which, in his mind, is the smartest thing that he can do right now. Oh, dear. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yes. <laughs> um... Oh wait, shit, never mind. Uh I don't have that spell. I took that instead. Uh fuck. That was gonna be funny. <laughs> what levitating the frog. <laughs> yeah, that was it. <laughs> Love me levitate shenanigans. Damn it, why don't I take it? <laughs> well you could not anticipate this situation. <laughs> I don't think anyone could. I don't think levitation would have been very helpful in this situation. <laughs> Unless you were planning to flintstone your way there. <laughs> so everyone's now watching the, the, the pile of you, essentially a circus act at this point. And uh, a small child runs up and kind of throws a coin in your direction and then runs back to a parent. He's going to, like, lean down and <laughs> try to reach the coin from atop the... Take an acrobatics check. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh. Oh. It was pretty good. <laughs> what was it? Yeah, uh, 16. 16, yeah. all right. So, um, with a 16, you managed to swoop up that coin and with a lot of effort, but minimal <laughs> uh, minimal difficulty, you get back up onto the back of the toad. He's going he's gonna to toss it to Feather and looking very it's pleased at himself. I catch it. It's silver. So what are you guys doing now? Because like right now you're stationary on a toad. Like I don't well, have I'm a lot to get, work I'm, with here. I'm not getting into that mouth. There's very little I can do in this situation. I'm aware. <laughs> there is one thing you could do, but I think that would go worse for you. Um, I think that would be an instant character death at this point. So yeah, yeah no. Do we want to just take about? Well, this doesn't seem to work. Or Asda, do you want to be on Steve's back? I will climb in the mouth. <laughs> he, he looks. He no looks over. He looks over, like, like over his head, all the way up to you. <laughs> and he, like, he's generally thinking about it. He's oh, trying to decide which one is worse. Could also just think about. 
Maybe we should just take a boat. Steve, what do you say? Should we take a boat? I um, think it might be a lot easier. Maybe we could put on a little show disassembling this mess. Um, we might meet someone interesting after. Do a backflip. <laughs> I stand up and do a backflip down. Okay, make an acrobatics <laughs> check. I've rolled shit this whole time, so it's double digits. Hey! Uh, 17. 17. Yeah, you do a backflip. You, uh, It's cobbles, so you land a little awkwardly. Bit of an ankle twinge. Like, you were pretty high up. Ta-da! There, there's a, a smattering of, you know... I'm gonna... Thank you. After you complete the uh, the backflip, but very like very late after it, I'm gonna cast uh, minor illusion for like like sparkly effects. Nice. It was like took you a solid. Second Where do you cast those? The landing. Just like ar around <laughs> around <laughs> Featherin. Oh, okay, around Featherin. Understood. But and, like like a solid five seconds after. Yeah. After the backflip. If the oh, toads manage to stand up. up. I'm a. <laughs> no, you're just an NPC with an interesting quest now. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm a superhero landing off the back of the toad. I'm a jump. Okay. Doing a superhero landing. <laughs> all right. With the, the shield. All yeah. of that. Oh damn. All right. Uh, roll a d20 for me. <laughs> a five. A five. <laughs> all right. Yeah, you land. You land. And then your knee lands. And that's painful. But I'm otherwise, make, yeah, Asda? I'm going to make some sparkly effects around him, too. Okay, you make some more sparkly effects. <laughs> the amazing Steve from... Not here! Yes, Steve! That is factual. <laughs> uh, thank you, Marin Owens. Thank you. <laughs> well, Esther, do you want to come down? Knowledge keeps you safe. Esther, while you're up there, make a perception check. <laughs> <laughs> now that the toad has inflated somewhat and you're actually, like, you know, higher than you were if you were standing on a small box oh wow oh, okay. damn. holy moly uh so you catch out of the the corner of your eye um something uh dipping its head behind the um the like uh, peak of a roof honestly whoever is spying on us thinking we're a threat <laughs> after this show <laughs> we're not anymore <laughs> they're, they're, not report. Gonna they're a circus come on I'm gonna, um, with my kind of have a limited vocabulary here, so instead I'm just gonna like point towards there and like like dig my heel into the toad like a horse. Let's go. I mean, a toad would be able to see where you're pointing because of where their eyes are. So I'll yes. yeah, it's and you know what? That's perception seventeen. Seventeen. That's, that's very form. nice for you. You you definitely see the finger pointing. You have a heel dug in your side. Do you know what that means? <laughs> just look look up at Asda. Now one of the eyes swivels around to just stare at yeah. you, Asda. Oh my god. <laughs> that's how toad eyes work, my dude. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, with your situation there. At this point, I think I'm going to start walking in the in the direction of Stonespire. Okay, you start walking in the direction of Stonespire, um, which I imagine is to where you got the boat from last time. So you yeah. walk a couple of streets down um, to where the uh, where where you found the gondola previously. And as you're walking, um, you would uh, you would notice as well, um, Alison, that uh, there's something following you on the rooftops. 
You just see it, it peek over the, the peaks occasionally. And as that, you probably see this as well. I'll just turn one eye to look directly at it. Make a perception check. Don't get anything funky for being a giant toad. Uh, that's a 23. 23? Yeah, it's a, uh, a, a head um, with uh, like quite pointed ears coming off it. Um, it's silhouetted, so you can't make out too much detail. But you get a good look at it, and it's definitely humanoid and ducking behind the thing. And you can see what look like wings uh, poking over to the sides. Uh, These sort of the grey triangles. Um, like, medium size. Okay. Humanoid size. Okay, so yeah, like, average human size. Yeah, sure. For that category. Yeah, quite angular features. Okay. But you like you know silhouette. You can't make out too much of the the sort of you you make out the the sort of outline, but not much more. Okay. I mean, my ability to communicate as a giant toad is rather limited. Yes, yes, it is. So just stop, stop, turn towards where I saw it, so and go. <laughs> It, uh, what are you stopping for? What we're Stone Spire's this way. Is there a shortcut that way? What? what? What's going on? Looking up towards the roof. Uh, I'm looking in the direction. Too. Yeah, there's nothing there now. Okay. Ducked out of sight. Um, I guess I'll just continue walking towards Stone Spire. Then. Okay, you continue walking towards Stone Spire. <laughs> so weird uh, that animals can't talk here. Yeah? So weird. Um, I'm going to keep throwing cautionary looks towards the rooftops because what happened to me earlier make a perception check all we're doing this session is making perception <laughs> checks yes <Yeah. laughs> just, just over and over so and someone's over again. spying on us <laughs> that's a whole nine a whole nine nice rooftops good job <laughs> some of them are thatched some have tiles it's a oh. variety start thinking about the the lessons you could learn from a roof maker or whatever you call them it's like is it by chance? Um, is it by chance that um, there are so, some areas that have the uh, tiled roofs, like very like like these couple of buildings next to each other have tiled roofs, and then there's flat between them? Uh, no, no, no. It's kind of like patches. Okay, okay so it's it's not like yeah, there was a fire in on the flat roofs going through here, and when we built it up again, we put tiles there instead. Uh, no, no. As you, as you um. As you walk along, and it's not it's not a long walk, um, but you go from a sort of thatched aesthetic that's more like around the uh, the the waterside, and then it's more sort of shingled um, in the uh, like further away from from the uh, sort of center of the city. As you work out the buildings are newer, and you move into sort of tiled areas and whatnot. Okay. Um, yeah. So you guys get on a boat. Well, I can just swim, so... Yeah, you're going to swim. So who's getting in the boat? I mean, I'm still on top of him, so... Okay, so you're going to swim on the toad as well? Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna get on the boat. Okay, you're going to get on the boat. And we'll say that Featherin is still on top of Steve. So, <laughs> the the guy driving the boat just looks over you and just goes, Yeah, this city... And uh, <laughs> asks you for. Uh, I know, right? They're strange people. Yeah, ask you for the uh, the ten gold fare. The Excuse me. Ten gold doesn't sound like a. Yeah, you said you wanted to go across to uh, you know around the side of Stone Spire, eh? Yes, 
It's not that far, is it? Oh, it's ten gold. Warm it. <laughs> hey, God. I, I don't think it would be ten gold. It's not really that far. I think you might be pulling my leg here. Oh, well, you may as well walk then. Can I do an insight check on him to see if he's just sure. trying to scam us out of money? Huh? Make an insight check. Um, no. It costs 10 gold. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering what you rolled. <laughs> that was the natural one, so five. It actually costs 20 gold. Yeah, it's giving us a discount. Yeah. <laughs> seems like a straight <laughs> like up guy. Yeah, it seems completely fair <laughs> to me. Hmm, all right. Well, the toad wouldn't be out to because Steve's a little bugged, but his only other option is walking. That... I'm sure you could make that price a little bit easier for us. We just need to go there. It won't be long. You know it won't be long. I mean, that's one of the longest trips in the city. You gotta go all the way around the peak. Alright. I mean, you've taken this journey and you're like, oh yeah, no, that actually is like... <laughs> you know, you have to go all the way around the giant cliff that Stone Spire is and then back up the other side and then that's... That's how you took the journey before. At this point, Alison just jumps into water. Yeah, Asda, you point. get very wet. <laughs> toads don't exactly swim on the surface. <laughs> oh my like god. A toad, a toad swimming is like, you get like the eyes and top part of the head yep. above and everything else is below. Yeah, you are, you are to the chest soaked. You look very unpleased. And you're having, a, you're having to like try and grab on to the toad, but like there isn't really much grip now that it's wet, it's extremely <laughs> slick, and you're sliding around, and I'm going to need you to make, oh, an athletics check. Oh. <laughs> I was hoping for at least an acrobatic check. You were essentially trying to grapple yourself exactly. onto a toad. Exactly, <laughs> you're trying to grapple the toad. Uh, yeah, that's about right. Yeah, you slip off into the water. I mean, I, I hate to be that guy, but um, what's the sewage situation like in this? What's the, the sewage situation? Um, yeah. It's uh, it's not great. Is it my, it's is better it than... Is dumped into the canal? Into mostly the no. Mostly no. Um, okay. But it's still not... It, you know, it's... It's better water than you would find in find in your average dungeon, say. But other than that, it's not. It's not. For, I mean, I, I'm, imagine I'm Venice. It's I'm... it's Venice. You know. Okay, so that the, the water here is fucking filthy. No, it's slightly <laughs> better than yeah. Venice because of magic it's exists. It's just a but... sewer. <laughs> Purify like every... water is a spell that exists. So yeah, it's, uh... every major city, uh, uh, medieval city, I uh, it's built near water. It's going like, well, I guess we're dumping the sewage in the river. <laughs> Yeah. Right. So, I, so I drop into water. Yep. And uh <laughs> Well you're swimming now. Well, in my head, um Azar doesn't swim. Okay. <laughs> so I'm gonna do a little just... doggy paddle. Okay, and yeah, slowly that's start to go underwater. Yep, no worries. So just uh, as that's just slowly sinking below the surface. Can okay, so I'll just You're very I'll quiet just... again, Shelly. I don't know. That was so weird. Why are I'll we just jumping in the river? Dive down, down, and just push, gently push Asta back onto the surface so he doesn't drown. <laughs> well, Asta was riding the toad, and the toad jumped in the water. And there's not very much toad that's above water in that situation. And Asta couldn't hold on, so he fell off. Because as that was going to ride the toad, well, you and Steve got a boat. Okay, now you're completely silent. <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
Yeah, nothing. <laughs> Literally, you like... You muted yourself. Have you disconnected your mic somehow? Is that better? Yes. 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 <laughs> you cannot actually hear you. Ow. Why? Uh, what did you do? Aliens. I don't, I don't know. Um, you sound better than you did yesterday now. I don't understand. I just I I fiddled around with the uh, slider for the input sensitivity, but mm -hmm. I just put it like I put it somewhere else that should have been better. And then I put it back to the way it was before I I I, I went away. Sounds but like now, a Discord exactly problem. The same as before. Yeah. There's only one explanation. Why? The, Aliens. The, the person the person who's playing you just rolled well. <laughs> you know how they say like, everything's a simulation well no exactly. i mean they don't say everything is a simulation everything is a simulation yeah yeah then it's not a simulation it's just a big D, &D game i mean yeah sure that would make sense actually because you know when you have like you, you're suddenly like oh man like where did this week go it's like that's probably oh. just when the guy says oh in the interest of time <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and like everyone, like <laughs> everyone rolled for stats. That way, some people are, you know, very different from each other. Sure. Anyway, moving on from existential crises that are looming <laughs> in all of our futures, you guys yeah, sure. are push Asda back onto land. The gondolier guy is just like looking at you guys, like. So you're getting in the boat, or? <laughs> yeah, he's gonna very, just very, like, grumpily step into the boat, like, all soaking wet. Nourish keeps you safe. <laughs> <laughs> I've been hearing Why that a lot recently. And he starts Wait, punting, sorry. punting out into the, the water. I kind of zoned out there. Can you just... Uh... Why did you jump in the water, Asda? He's going to stare was, at you. <laughs> there was this little buck on the ground, and I was... It was like that big, and it was red, and... Anyway. Really pretty here. I'm a hand of the, the gondola is 10 gold. Oh, yeah, he already took that before you got in, uh, seeing the shenanigans you guys were up to. Okay. <laughs> you want 10 gold? I will chip in half. That way, they negotiated hard, Shelley. I would have just paid it. <laughs> I was just not there. So. We, uh, we take a boat ride all the way around, just like you did before, uh, to the, uh, the e most easily accessible point to get up to um, Stone Spire. So, it takes about the same amount of time that it did before, which was a time that I said at the time and don't remember, but, you know, probably about 45 minutes or something. Yeah, it's pretty peaceful. Still less than the two hours I have on Wild Trash. <laughs> I Who would like to make a perception check for me? Oh, I can do a perception check. Okay, you do a perception check. I snuggle I have a up question. against Steve and snooze a little. There's my nap. <laughs> I have a question about the map. Sure. Where does this, is this just a river going nowhere? But no, it's a canal, dude. <laughs> Why does it stop? Uh, because there's factories at the other end and they load stuff in and then they use a series of locks to barge it to the, where the, where larger boats can then take the cargo on board. Where does the water go? Yeah, just FYI, the waterways on this are based on a real town in Finland. So, yeah, I mean, the take it up with is, the Finnish Port Authority, I guess. <laughs> the, the thing is, uh, it, the thing is, a man-made canal does not need running water. Yeah, exactly. So, I assume that most of the water here is static. Uh, not all of it, but most of it, yeah. And I, it, I mean, yes, but water still flows. Well, yeah, well, but it has like you flow too. <laughs> yeah, it's you know. That's, uh... But I mean, it does. It can flow down from here to there, given the elevations. And... So, let's 
look at the actual map just because now we're sciencing apparently. <laughs> um, the perception score was 24, by the way. <laughs> so as you can see, this is a lake which is being fed by these two tributaries here. And then the city expands into the lake. So the lake is already pretty static, you know? Like, there, sure, there's water moving through it, but most of a lake isn't moving water. It's water that is just oscillating against the current of other water that is moving and not actually, you know, becoming part of that flow because water dynamics are crazy. No, I mean, a lake is static, but that was like a, a, can, a canal. That was like a... Yeah, but that's built into the lake. Yeah, like... It there was just no lake, happened. though. It, it just, just went into another water. canal. Well, yeah, that's... How can it... So so the way canals work, right, you, you dig below the water level, <laughs> and it fills up with water. And as long yes. as the water level stays higher than the level of the ground, you have static <laughs> water. That's how water works. Yeah, but you're saying that, like... All of them are exactly at the same level, which is not possible. Have you been to Venice or Amsterdam? No. Or anywhere with canals? I have been to the ocean. Okay, the ocean works differently because of tides. <laughs> uh, the ocean works differently because it's fucking massive. Well, the I ocean works the same, but on like both a smaller and larger scale. Yes. Anyway, getting away from how water works. <laughs> Look, water is wet. Uh, that, that's just the end of it. So, you guys are making your way up Stone Spa, and this time you're looking to go into the buildings itself. Um, it's laid out uh, like a 17th century chateau. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a bunch of buildings and a sort of loose cluster with like a uh, you know rolling rolling fields and stuff, um, which is very weird because like everything outside of the actual grounds of the um... I've forgotten the name of the place. They all come to me. It's coming. The the Apachem uh, Esoteric. Um... It's uh, how, how did you forget that name? I know, right? It's, <laughs> it's, it's so ridiculous. <laughs> what can I say? So, um, you have uh, the these uh, this very rocky and stony, you know, you're hiking essentially to get up to it, and then as soon as you like cross into the grounds, it's like much smoother ground, much easier going. There's nice gravel paths, there's like nice little like green bits, there's some some rolling kind of uh, gardens, um, a lot of flowers and stuff. It's very pretty, and there's uh, and the whole place is um, very much these uh, kind of very modern. Um, looking buildings uh which for us looks like you know 17th century 18th century kind of french architecture um lots of windows um very tall and thin buildings you know like they don't have a lot of depth to them but they go up a, a, a few stories and it looks pretty amazing actually because you you know the elevation as you look uh you know the, these buildings are quite high next to you but then you're also already quite a long way up above the uh, the rest of the city, with only really uh, Wildcliff being taller than you guys, uh, at a higher altitude, that is. So, you can see students ranging from, you know, 14 through to like maybe mid-30s, maybe mid-80s. It's hard to tell. There's a real broad range. They get them both young and old here. Who knows when magical ability will develop. Uh, question: What was the perception check for? Do you want to get to know that? Uh, what did you get on the perception check? I do not remember. Twenty-four. Oh, a twenty-four. Apologies, I completely forgot that we hadn't already said what was happening with that. Uh, no, we got distracted by water. You saw a um, a uh, shape uh, flit very quickly from a rooftop near the water line to below the water, and you never saw it come back up again. And when you looked underwater, you couldn't see it. Okay. The, the visibility underwater is not fantastic, as we've discussed. <laughs> yeah, um, would not recommend swimming in this water for too long. <laughs> Better than going in your mouth and taking 3d6 acid damage every six seconds while you're in there. 
Oh my god, that's what's going to happen. That was, that was, I just that didn't is... want to do it because it was gross. <laughs> well, well, I mean, one of the reasons it's gross is because of all of the acid. <laughs> I mean, that's only if you don't, you get fully, fully swallowed. You can just, you know, like, sit half swallowed. That, that's, that's not a thing, but sure. <laughs> I mean, you're not really swallowed at all, right? If you're just in a mouth, nobody would say it's already swallowed. Just swallowed if you actually get it out of your mouth. I was, I was just thinking, like toads are slimy, mouths are slimy. A toad's mouth is like extra slimy. Well, when you're talking about the uh, using an ability named swallow, I assume that you're swallowing. Uh, well, it didn't happen regardless, so... Yeah, yeah true. So, that's... Uh, See, so um, you guys uh, making your way um, past the uh, up to the uh, the buildings here. Um, what are you doing? What are you looking for? What do you want to do? There's students moving around. They all kind of give you a look and then continue on their way because that is not the weirdest shit they've seen today. <laughs> Looking for someone. I wrote down ask the esoteric about the planes. <laughs> well, that was specific. Okay, so you just say, What about the planes to the air around you now that you are in the <laughs> esoteric? And you guys are done, you can leave again. Doesn't say anything uh... about obtaining an answer to that question. Nobody said anything. I'm gonna stop a student. Okay. I'm like, hey, hello, you there? Yes, you, hello. Yeah, you stop this uh, this half elf that's um, got very uh, very trimmed hair. Uh, it's very very short. Uh, she stops and she looks at you. Uh, 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 yes, uh, uh, can I help you? Yes, I hope so. You are not by chance uh, the student who uh, researches the Billy Bloma Naturana? Excuse me, what? Perfect. We are searching for someone to ask about the planes of existence. You want to learn a little. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, Would you know who we could ask? The, the admissions office? Where's that? Uh, the, the, the big building, that way. And points to the oh. building in the centre. Perfect. Thank you very much. You're yeah. welcome. I mean... I don't think you're allowed to take your toad with you. Posh. It's not a toad. It's a. It's a toad. <laughs> They're walking away quickly. <laughs> Thank you. Your hair looks nice. Okay, we have to go that way. I stride towards the admission. Currently <laughs> in the middle of the campus, which is very convenient. Full campus. Yeah, well, I mean, you get to the the main building there, and there's sort of a sign that says visitors and reception, and it's you know it's very organised. Everything seems to be in its place here. That is not what my actual real life experience. Yeah, That's you push open the door, and uh, this giant eel falls out of a cupboard next to you, and just starts slithering away as two students are trying to grab it with these nets. Now that sounds more like university. <laughs> 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 nice. Did I do that though? Hmm? Like, did I open the door so hard that I. Oh, no, you just opened the door and, like, about 15 feet further down the corridor, like, this oh, door okay. opened because this eel just. So the door swang open as the eel fell out and started slithering down the corridor. Cool. There's little crackles of electricity around it. Yeah, and the yep. uh, the students are wearing big rubber gloves and have like you know like the snake poles and also a net that they're trying to get the head into. Yeah, um, average average day for your marine biology students. <laughs> uh, biologists. The and there, there's this biologists. sound as it slithers along. It's just sort of. And a slight smell of ozone as well. Mm, <laughs> Jump nice. in next to Feather then. 
Wait, Are you, do you fit through the door? Yeah. Uh, listen, can you see the reception? This is grand, you know. Uh, there's a sign that says reception about uh, 40 feet down the corridor uh, on the far side of the oh. students wrangling the eel. Yes, thank you, over there. Oh, we're so perceptive. Let's go, people! Okay, so you just step over the eel and just, excuse me, past the students. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, everyone make a con save as you go past. I mean, I can, I can jump over the you eel. You can jump over the eel, yeah, you're fine. You want to jump I over make the a eel. wall run. No, I don't. Con save, 17. Mm hmm. But the rest of you guys? Nine. Asda? 17. All right, uh, Steve, you take one point of lightning damage as a, a stray spark catches you in the ankle as you sort of trying to navigate this space. Being much larger than everybody else, you're not able to give the eel quite as much room. <laughs> okay. And you don't have a 10 foot high height. Yeah, these, these students are bickering with each other. Uh, does anybody understand Abyssal? Talking yeah, it's just this kind of demonic screeching at each other. <laughs> As you would when you're chasing an eel. <laughs> what do they look like? What kind uh, of one's thing? a half orc, and the other one uh, appears to be a full elf, um, but is very dark skinned, um, possibly a they drow. Just scream each other in a bristle. <laughs> That's hilarious. Again, <laughs> hit the average for uh, Marie Biologist. <laughs> They're just. Just arguing as they try to, you know, deal with this eel situation. You leave the <laughs> behind you. <laughs> yeah, it's actually kind of hard to tell the difference between the eel, the sound the eel makes, and the abyssal. All right, let's go into the visitor's office. Yeah, you, uh, you go into the reception, and there's a. Uh, there's a, an automaton stood behind the counter as you walk in. Its eyes light up, its head lifts up, and it says, Greetings. How may we... Uh, eh, 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 <laughs> and the guy uh, behind it, he's just cr crouched, like, sort of fiddling with it, stands up and goes, ah, Blast! Oh, he hello! Hi! I wasn't so expecting anybody to come in. That must be what caused that little problem. He activated unexpectedly. <laughs> then maybe have to give him an auto safety with the with the uh, the, the sensor there. Then it notices that you're coming. Hello, how can I help? We're searching for the person who could teach us something about the planes of existence and answer some questions. Oh, extra dimensional geography. I guess. Or are you looking for extra dimensional cartography? Both. Hmm. I think. They're different departments. Uh, Alyssa? Robert. <laughs> Robert, once for yes and twice for no. Do you want the geography? <laughs> <laughs> Robert. Do you want the cartography? Robert. Steve! <laughs> I don't understand what she's saying. <laughs> At oh, this point, I think I'll Wasn't that just it. two <laughs> yeses? I think the, 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 your, your, your toad wants both. Uh, are you... Is it the toad that's... Uh, are, you, are you looking to enroll in a course? Or... <laughs> We need an Normally ex. people ask questions when they they've after they've enrolled in a course. <laughs> uh, at this point I'll drop the toad shape. Well, oh hello I there. Questions without being enrolled in a course. I don't want to take no. a full course. I just have some very specific questions that I hope somebody can answer without hmm. having to take a full course of something that doesn't actually interest me in a larger regard. You know? I have stuff to do, man. Oh, this is most unusual. Normally, people come here to enroll in the course. You, you, you're like it. Hmm. Um, hello. Yes, we just have. I just have some uh, specific questions. Yes. Uh, perhaps I could help. What are the questions? Um. Do you know the fate of uh, 
of King Nidhild the Proud of Brilaid? No. Next question. <laughs> you know where Brilaid is? It does ring a bell. I think I read about it in a book once. Is it in the Feywild? Is it Feywild? Sounds like a Feywild place. Um, but am I close? I think that sounds right. Oh, you don't know either. I thought it was That's like a quiz. No, I'm we're asking you the question. What is wrong with you? I really was just in the middle of something, and I, I'm having a little bit of trouble focusing on this conversation when I have all of the problems I want to solve here also Together. bubbling around. Could you just point me in the direction of someone who might know? Uh, yes, uh, if you enroll in a course, then I imagine somebody from either the extra dimensional cartography or geography departments would be able to help you. Um, where is the extra dimension? Where are those departments? Well, you see, they're not exactly here. By which you mean? Well, when we say extra dimensional in this kind of place, we really take it seriously. Right. So last I saw, uh, the extra dimensional cartography had decided that you needed to put on a very specific boot, jump three times around in a circle, and then kick a football in order to be transported there. But I don't think that worked out too well, because people kept getting dizzy and falling over. I'm not sure what they're up to these days. Last time I saw any of them. Hmm. Maybe two years ago? I lose track. There's not been anybody new, and nobody checked in in the meantime. I'm nobody not the only like one who works here. Put in a research paper. But, a, a what now? No. Why are you just... I thought they were very well organised. You thought of a magical, a, a place of magical learning. Bless you. A, Bless you. <laughs> Damn it, I thought I, thought I timed it well. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you th I'm sorry, but... <laughs> you, you thought we were all... Why would you think that? It's a university. It's just more and more for university, the more you see me. <laughs> Uh, I've never really had any, you know, experience in that regard and in, in so much close proximity with anything arcane. And I just right. assume from the... Have you ever heard of a cat? Have you heard of cats? Are cats a thing on this plane or are they from somewhere else? A, a what? Cats. I, I know think cats. From here. Yeah, you know, you're aware of cats? Have you ever tried to get a group of them to stay in one place and do the same thing? Azra's gonna nod that. knowingly. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you just ask? <laughs> usually, so, I mean, cats can be kind of difficult to work with, but usually they, they're all right if you're just polite. You know what? I think this would be much easier if I just look up the name of the person who's currently in charge of one of those departments. Or people. Yes. Does that sound like a good idea? It does. Yes. Great. Let me just go and find the records room. I know it was around here somewhere. And he starts opening drawers. <laughs> I, I really don't get what the men put the gift for. You just like to the can I go back out and Sorry, the Tripp, uh, you you're very, very quiet and soft there. Hmm? Oh, okay. Compared to the usual. My apologies. I was just saying, I really don't get what he meant with the, uh, with cats. You just need to be polite and they'll usually do what you tell them. Never. Ah, found it! And he uh, pulls out a uh, a book and uh, sets it down on the floor, waves a hand, and it flips open and a door shoots out and he opens the door and walks in and you don't see him on the other side of the door. Of course. 
And then the uh, door shuts and the book closes. You think he can get back out of that, or is he just lost well, like, now? Hope he'll come back. I'm gonna pick up the book and shake it. Okay, you pick up the book and shake it. <laughs> like you would, like a box. Mm -hmm, sure. It appears to be full of pages. <laughs> uh, I'll open it up. Okay, you open it up. It appears to be a book that is blank. You okay. flick through the pages. The center two pages have very ornate arcane diagrams on them, and then the rest are blank. Well, we lost that guy. Um... I'll just wait for a bit. <sighs> well, I won't go far. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm going back out of the corridor. Can I see those two students? Uh, no, they appear to be have resolved that issue. There's just the slithering trails of wetness from the eel <laughs> from from the doorway. Can I go up to that doorway and give it a? Uh, the doorway that the the eel fell out of. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. There's you knock on it. Yeah. The eel doorway. <laughs> You hear demonic screeching? <laughs> no, there's no reply. No reply. Anyone up and down my corridor? Nope. I'm going back outside looking for a student. Okay, there's like a hundred of them just crisscrossing around. You're just gonna grab one? Yeah. Yeah, you Hello. stop this uh, this gnome. Uh, he looks up at you. All right, Governor, ask again. No, it's not so bad. I. Oh, hey, you're you're uh, mighty, mighty large there. Hey, you're uh, Loxodon, right? Yes, yes. We oh, often nice. get confused nice. with the the Loxo. Uh, yeah, it seems to be a few of them in town. I've been hearing about a lot of them. Uh, uh, who else have you heard of? Did you did you, did you meet anyone else? I I would love to meet one of my own people out here. Uh, I mean, I can't say it. No, I just, uh, just heard it in the bar, you know. Uh, apparently one of them put down a couple of zombies the other day. Ah, oh, right. Um, that was, uh, was me. Oh, I right. Believe. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, you don't meet many uh, many a Loxodon out here, actually. Yeah, sure, <laughs> sure. I bet that makes it easier to pass this kind of story off on it, doesn't it, Gav? <laughs> nice try. Good job. Yeah, it does. It, it does. It definitely Good one. does. But... Okay. Regardless of that, and mm -hmm. yourself, um, you couldn't happen to tell me how I could get myself to the interdimensional geography or cartography classes. The interdimensional in cartography and geography classes. I've enrolled in one of them, and a friend with me is. Oh, you're is looking for room B two in that building over there. Oh, wonderful! Um, and I know that it's interdimensional. So, uh, do they have yeah. anything that we interdimensional? Need to do, right? I. Like they, I heard about the a uh, couple of years ago with the boot and the the ball. Is there any of that shenanigans going on now? Well, not that I've heard, Gav. I mean, uh, mostly the inter yeah, mostly those departments just stay in the same place. Um. <laughs> well, can I check if he's actually being honest with me? Because students have a tendency yeah, sure, roll an inside check. Wrong, wrong direction. <laughs> Twenty-one. Yeah, it's telling the truth. Tell, tell them the truth. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh. Well, thank you. Have a nice day. And uh, yeah, just have a nice day. Yeah. He grins after you, gives you a little salute, spins on his heel, clicks his fingers, and a little dog appears, and he jumps on it and rides off. <laughs> course no one walks here a lot of people are walking but there's quite a few halflings and gnomes that are sort of making use of mastiffs i'm gonna walk back to the make group. a perception check i would in the meantime like to rifle through whatever it is that is on the desk see if i can find like a map of the grounds make an investigation check <clears throat> dirty 20 a uh, dirty 20 um as you sort of looking around you just sort of look glancing at the buildings as you sort of turn around to 
to go back inside you a little bit of movement out of the corner of your eye catches uh, it just catches you out of the corner of your eye you look up and um high up in the sky there's a uh a, just a spiraling flying shape and it's just flying perfect circles that was what kind of you know it wasn't just a bird it like birds don't just fly in circles for ages even vultures like you know don't do the same circle every time how large does it seem? It's hard to tell how far away it is. Yeah. Okay. Fourteen. Fourteen investigation. Uh, you do find a map Ooh. of the university. Yeah. Can I find anything about the extra dimensional? Uh, make an arcana check. Oh. This isn't your everyday map. <laughs> uh, 13? 13. As best as you can tell, it's in squid by eel cross section. It's but you're thinking that maybe you're being biased by your earlier experiences seeing an eel. Why is everything slippery? I pocket the map. <laughs> in my. No. Do I have a bag of holding? No, I don't. Mm, I pocket it. Okay, yeah. Uh, so you're folding up this map, um, and it really feels like there's way too many pieces that you're having to fold in order to actually make this smaller. Like, you just keep on folding it, and it's like, what's... what's... Oh, my God! <laughs> and eventually you get to the point where it seems smaller than it was, you just put it back in your pocket. <laughs> just a little bit smaller. <laughs> well, you know how, like, a theme park Got guide... You know how, like, a, a zoo guide leaflet or something that you get, like, they always seem like they have way more panels than they actually do, and you're like, wait, what? Oh, it folds in half as well, and you... It's kind of like that, except that the size didn't feel like it was changing, and it felt like it went on three times as long. Oh. Oh, got big pockets. Okay. I'm gonna go to the other side of the thing again. And just no worries. Wait. Where's the book? I'm holding it. You're still holding it. All right. Yes. <laughs> Holding it closed, for the record. Yep, no worries. Uh, um, Steve, hey, you're back. Find anything? I found uh, where the interdimensional geography and cartography rooms are. I got a... Someone pointed it out to me. Is it could go have a look. Or extra dimensional we're searching for at this point. I just don't know anymore. Might as well ask. Um. Also, also, I just remembered. Has any, did anyone else see a big, a big sprite-like being following us? No. Okay. <laughs> Maybe just miss home. I napped on the. All right, let's go. Uh, anybody want to stay here with the book? Should we just take the book with us if if the guy comes out again? I'm gonna like bet, wave around the book. Knowledge keeps you safe. Yes, it does. They, as I, I think they keep the knowledge <laughs> safe in here, though. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm holding it. I'm carrying the book with me. Okay, okay. good to know. We set off to. <laughs> the building that was pointed out to Steve. Yep, no worries. Uh, <laughs> so you're yeah. walking through the grounds and uh, you hear someone call out, got your toad fixed then? And you're still walking. Yeah! yeah. It's a tiefling now! <laughs> what do you mean, thanks? I'm very confused. So you continue to the building, you go inside, and this building's a little bit more normal than the other one. The other one seemed a little, you know, the eel was was disturbing, you know. Maybe if the eel hadn't happened, it would have been a bit of a better experience overall, but, you know, the sound of those, that slithering echoing around the corridor. You walk in. Going in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing keeps you safe. So... Stop. I'm not going to sleep tonight. 
Well, I mean, you can thank us tomorrow then. <laughs> so, you carry uh, you carry on your way to to room B two, which you discover is on the second floor and is the second door on the left after the stairs. That makes too much sense. I know, way too much sense. <laughs> and the sign says interdimensional geography on it. All right, all right, I'm coming, I'm coming. <laughs> and uh, the door opens, and there's a uh, <clears throat> there's a tiefling stood there, um, blue skinned. Uh, the horns um, aren't doing the the curve around; they're doing the the up and point. And it uh, looks like uh, one of them's been filed down a little bit, and uh, this little thing has been attached to it. Um, that is glowing a faint green. Hello! And I Hi. gesture to listen. Hello! Uh, can I help you? I have some questions, if you don't mind. Uh, certainly. Uh, just step inside here and, um... Oh, you'll, 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 you'll be fine. Careful step inside. Yeah, and uh, he, uh, the uh, tiefling turns around and uh, starts walking up the stairs, which um, just sort of transition onto the wall and then the ceiling and then the other wall, and it just kind of spirals down the corridor like that. Right. Creepy. I. Keep coming along. Yeah. Got That's some good. questions too. Okay, so uh, once you guys have made, you know, a couple of loops of the, the corridor, I would like you all to make constitution saves. I already feel nauseous about it. Natural twin. <laughs> Feather in. <laughs> oh my god, this is amazing. I love it. 17. <laughs> uh, a con save, you said? Yes. Great. Right. You say that every time I ask you for a roll. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just as excited every time. Steve, what did you get? 12. Oh, okay. So, everybody did well. Nice. There's a there's a moment where you're like, "Ooh," but you guys are able to sort of look at your feet and recenter yourselves and carry on your way. Feather in, you were just looking around like this is the coolest shit ever. Yeah. Yeah. And then the uh the uh, as you're walking along the uh, this sort of final part part of the stairs, um, it feels like the stairs are getting closer than they should, and then you realize that the end three stairs are actually just a wall, and uh, the the guy waves a hand, and a part of it slides back and in, into it, and there was a kind of weird optical illusion that with the path you followed, you could never tell that that was actually you know not flat. And inside, there's just a nice little office. There's a little fire going in the corner, and there's a a kettle at the side, and a plate of biscuits on the desk. And that's quite a trip just to get to your office. Well, you know, it's uh, one of those things. We'll. It's sort of expected, you know. Yeah. So, interdimensional that's geography. What can I do for you? And take one of. Um, uh, do you know of the light? Mmm, can't say I do. Oh. Was, was that it? <laughs> that, the, we suspect uh, it's in the Feywild. Wait. Oh, you want the extra dimensional geography department. This is interdimensional. Steve! <laughs> was it not interdimensional geography? I, I thought, what? No, oh, because uh, this is all about the dimensions that are within the dimensions that we're in, and then extra dimensional is all the dimensions outside of that, i.e. the planes. Where do the planes where gods reside fall on? Extra dimensional-ish. Ish. 
Well, right. they're sort of interdimensional as well in the fact that, you know, all of the, the souls of the followers of the gods also carry a little piece of the gods' plane within them and whatnot, you know. So it's a little bit of interdimensional in that sense, but uh, we're not allowed to rest around with that. Um, can you point us to where to go, Dan? Uh, I can. But uh, they're, they're actually on sabbatical at the moment in Aimadori. At the Astia Parete. Oh, freaking course they are! Well, <laughs> yeah, I've been there for oof, 18 years? months at least. Could be two years, eh? It was ever since that thing with the boot, you know, they wanted some time off after that. I mean, I understand why they would go to Amadori. It's definitely a place for anyone. Well, there's no so volcano, we... which was, I think, a plus for them. Oh, volcano? Oh, I, th I just thought it's because there's just so much, you know, extra dimensional and interdimensional stuff and with the, you know, with the magic and stuff like that, that's threefold. Well, you see, Easy to learn there. has anybody told you what happened with the boot? No. Oh, I love telling this story. It's a little bit of a rivalry. You understand. So they thought it might be a good idea to, uh, you know, try and see how laborious a process they could use to access their department in the hopes of, you know, getting some peace and quiet to actually get some work done without students bothering them. And so they thought, oh, we'll get a boot and we'll make it so you have to put it on and then hop three times around in a circle and then, you know, use an arcane gesture, patent pending, to open up the uh, the space, you know. Turns out that uh, when you're wearing a boot of such a nature, if you fall over, it goes a bit sideways with where it puts you. And there was a little incident with a volcano and, well, let's just say that there's a bit of an inside joke here of what has five arms and is a little bit terrible at what they do. It's the extra dimensional geography department. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because cause one of them lost an arm in the, in the lava. Then, or is it one person that had six arms? Uh, no, it's just the three of them. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> two and three quarters now. <laughs> uh, which volcano? I don't know. I'm not even sure if it was on this plane. <laughs> I mean, if it was, I'm actually I would be more annoyed about it. You know, it's sort of my territory. So, you, you wouldn't happen to uh, be able to get us to Imidori if you're within this plane, you can do all this wondrous stuff? I, I mean, what do you want? You want, you want to know about the Feywild and stuff? Have you tried the library? No. I'd try the library. You're uh, asking about recent-ish events? Oh, okay. Is it? Uh, yes, I think so, at least. Not sure. It's quite blurry. You know, I have to say that this would be much easier with a few more specifics. Um, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm ah, sorry! Uh, if you're all willing. He's casting tele teleport right now. Okay, <laughs> just mid into like mid introduction. <laughs> yeah, just like ah, fuck it. I don't I care. This, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> and every willing creature within twenty feet that wants to gets a free ride to Imadori. Ten feet. <laughs> Ten feet. Yeah, that's twenty foot diameter is what I said. I believe. I said within twenty. Uh... Oh, sorry. It's not I like this is being recorded. Nobody can check what I said. Are we going? Are we at? Do we actually want to go to Ivadori? 
I mean, there's people who can get us back in Amadori. <laughs> I mean, are people not are people not willing? Alison was willing. <laughs> I'm thinking about it. <laughs> I mean, it would be uh, it would be very interesting if I have to introduce a new character now. <laughs> okay, Asda, are you willing? I yes or I no. Don't wanna, it's a yes I or don't no. Wanna, I don't want to be left behind, but on the other hand, Asda would not be willing. So okay, no. so no. Steve, are you willing or no? Do I have I seen this spell before? Nope, not nope. a chance. <laughs> nope, <laughs> not willing. Featherin. Sure. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Alison? Oh, but I just got it in one go. I, I, already, I already said Alison was willing. <laughs> okay, so uh, two of you just arcing in light and whoop, like a teleporter, uh, like, a, like a transporter in Star Trek. Yeah, they're, they're out of there. And he's just stood there and he, Oh, well, shit, you're supposed to agree. I can't do it again today. You've left me left behind. <laughs> what are you going to do now? Your friends have gone off without you. Oh, excuse me. They're on a different continent now. It'll take you a month to get there by boat. Or I could send you tomorrow. <laughs> it takes a month or I can take you tomorrow. I mean, <laughs> knowledge keeps you safe. <laughs> I'm not really sure that applies here, lad. <laughs> Having it not been something I've seen before, it's... I'm not one to agree to something I don't Oh my god, you've never seen a teleport before? You surprise me. Of course you haven't. It's really bloody hard to do. That's why I can only do it once per day. And I've blown it now, haven't I? Because of you. And he sits down and really angrily starts, like, like these devilish incisors going into a biscuit. Like... <laughs> so, well, I guess I guess we need an exit for uh, Featherin. <laughs> Alzim and Featherin, you land on the side of a pyramid. Okay. In front of some steps leading down into some doors, and uh, for a moment you're like, "Oh, okay," and then you realize that look, you're you're stood at like a forty-five degree angle. And you don't feel like you are, but looking around, you definitely are. <laughs> All the buildings are going up in the wrong direction. That's how you can tell. Uh, Where's the rest? Alison? Yeah, that's just the two of you. Where's the rest? I was about to ask the same. I feel a bit dizzy. Oh, no. Can we leave them behind? Oh. Too bad. Well, shall we go? I... <laughs> Let's see if we can find someone and we can hopefully bring us back. Oh well, we'll find new party members. <laughs> so you carry on down into the ste down the steps and into the uh, into the building. And uh, now I need to really like dig into notes. Hang on one second. <laughs> right. What was the name of that person again? Yeah, that's essentially what I. How did I spell Astia? With an ass. I'm so confused. Let me get my notes. <laughs> I, I, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, just gonna, gonna just gonna get to do the, you know, with the, with what's it? Please. I'm a Dory. Oh, I was putting the accent on the wrong letter. I thought it was on the A, but it's on the I. All right. Uh. Well, you so you something. find reception oh. and you walk in and there is a an NB elf there who is um very well turned down, very nice robes, um a very close shaven head, um large, large pointed ears and Hello, can I help you? Um hi, is this Extra-dimensional geography. Uh, no, this is reception. We don't have an extra-dimensional geography department, but there is one visiting at the moment. We're searching for that one, because that's where we just came from. Ah, oh, wonderful. Could I take your names, please? Um, Princess Alison will be late. 
A feather in Forge Dawn. All right. Brelade, Brelade, Brelade. There's a new travel order to there at the moment. Would you uh, happen to know anything about that? I haven't heard any gossip. The elf sort of leans forward about five degrees. <laughs> uh, it was attacked by uh, Eucate and I think destroyed. Uh, sorry, Trip. you're uh, again just slightly too soft for your mic to deal with. Oh, my apologies. It's a challenging voice with a bad mic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was um was attacked by by King Eokid of Tara. Oh. I don't know anything more than that. Well, oh, I suppose we're gonna have to send out a historian. Uh, and uh, the elf makes a makes a note. Yes, well, I mean, history has happened, has it not? We must write it down. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Robot Trip. Oh, I'm a robot now. No, you're you're normal again. But there was definitely oh, okay. a robot trip for a second there. Oh. Simulation is falling apart. No. <laughs> Did, Did the screen that? fall off a different laptop? <laughs> <laughs> no, only no, uh, only the one. <laughs> Good to know. Uh. Can you uh, can you point me in the direction of this department? Uh, yes, absolutely. If you just walk to uh, a, 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 oh, it's a, uh, why don't I? Uh, you know what? This would probably be easier. And he's going to cast teleport. <laughs> <laughs> Are you both willing? <laughs> Yeah, now, that would be funny if only one of you was willing. Uh. Are you both willing? Yep. 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 Yeah, the, the, and uh, then you're, um, you land uh, on, the, on a wooden jetty uh, sticking out into a lake. Oh. Now, we traveled a lot today. This is... And this seems very disorienting with the full of travel. Make an edge check, uh, Alison. Okay. Nature, nature, nature. Do I have in CLT, then? No. Oh, that's fine. That's a 20. Dirty 20. You are... Uh... There's something wrong with this. This is, this is some form of illusion or something. It's, it's, not, it's not real. Um, this isn't real. You mean it isn't real? I'm standing right here. It's a glamour illusion of sorts. Mm -hmm. It's a good illusion. You see one of the birds glitch slightly and <laughs> fly the opposite oh. direction. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right. <laughs> it's not that good. What, you could do better. No, I can't. Well, then stop judging it! And it all goes black and you're just uh, stood on <laughs> a rug in, in yet another office. Um, this one's a little bit wider, a little bit more spacious. There's a nice open area in the center. It's like, well, if you could do so so much better, I mean, you can't even do it at all. That's just, oh my goodness, I can't even. And uh, there is a, a tiefling with a blue skin. Looks very similar to the tiefling that you were just speaking to a minute ago, but definitely not the same tiefling because this one is missing an arm. <laughs> uh, uh, well, well, I personally cannot do better. Um, my father could. Did you just lose an arm in this time? Uh, How long have we been gone? What? What? No, I lost. Why does everybody always bring it? One time, I fall over with the bloody boot on. I know it was my idea. Oh, you're the one! You're the one with the department with the volcano! That's fun. We didn't <laughs> want to have a volcano. <laughs> it just happened. <laughs> it's a good 
I see why it is a funny story now. Sorry, sorry. Um, we came to ask some questions. Oh, did my brother send you? Yeah, no, yes and no. Okay. They send us to the Amadori and then the guy in Amadori, the, the person, the the person behind the reception, sent us here. A uh, Fenno. Fenno. Is that who it was? <laughs> Very sleek, always into gossip. Yes, definitely that one. Never heard of him. Oh, you. Uh, <laughs> we got some questions. Uh, hope you can answer them. Well, I mean, uh, I'm sure there's somebody who runs this place around here somewhere. Uh, no, it doesn't appear to be. Uh, all right, what do you want to know? Um, do you know where Prelate is? Yes, in the Feywild. Could you be a bit more specific? About seven quadrants northwest of our, you know, normal origin point. Um, do you know how we could get back there? Yes. Can you tell me how I could get back there? Uh, well, first you need to wait for the travel ban to be lifted. Travel ban? Yeah, there's a travel ban. Well, there was a war. I don't know if it's safe yet. Yeah, we're waiting for a historian to be available to go and check it out. I don't suppose any of you know a historian, do you? Well, there was one in Pilate, but I do not know if he's still alive. Hmm, interesting. Didn't know we had anybody out there already. wonder why we haven't heard from them. Oh, dear. Might not be associated with you. We had a chronicler there. Oh, a chronicler. Like a, like a, uh, oh, how quaint. Wow. <laughs> 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 Alison looks just looks at him with a face of uh, how di how dare you and also uh, also she looks very sad and hurt. <laughs> All right, listen, buddy. We got a situation here. My friend is from there. Mm -hmm. There was an attack. Mm -hmm. She somehow got here. Well, okay. Not here, you know. Who's your friend? Like... Sorry, who are you? Um, well, I'm feather and fortune on that. This. Princess, Princess Alison of Prelate. Princess, eh? It's yes. a strange first name. It's a title. That, it's my title as I'm the first and only daughter of King Meda King Meda the Proud and Queen Etienne. Hmm. I'm not sure if congratulations or commiserations are in order. Yeah, neither are we. Yeah. Um, do you know what's happened to King Meadow? Uh, as far as we're aware, the uh, the army of Tara sort of have you ever seen a herd of horses? Yes. Have you ever seen? A small animal in front of a herd of horses while they're stampeding. I get what you're talking about. It was intense, is what I've heard. Uh, but like I say, I can't hear anything directly. It's just what my uh, my buddies in various other planes have heard, you know, with drinking in various cities and what. There's this I... one bar in the Astral Sea, honestly. Like, it's just. The best. The best. I was there during the attack and managed to escape. I know that it's... Mm. I know so roughly what happened, but... Well, on the upside, you've got a future of, you know, either either untethered now, you don't have to worry about the whole kingdom business, or, or you know, you can choose to worry only about the kingdom business. It's entirely up to you. You have a lot more choice than the average royal right now. That was her family. Well, well, you've met my brother. 
Yeah. Listen, just... yeah, he's just isn't he nauseating? He's so nice all the time. We're supposed to have devil blood for fuck's sake. Alison just sits on the floor and cries. Oh. Well, thank you. That does make me feel better. <laughs> I, I hug Alison. Devil's blood. It's like a get out of jail free card. It's really not. I'm not sure if I or him said that, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, you're both wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I'm wrong ironically. And he's just wrong. I'm just Meanwhile. <laughs> meanwhile. Steve. Asda. What are you two doing? <laughs> Literally on the other side of the planet right now from your friends. I mean, I have you guys ever heard the, the term don't split the party? <laughs> this is the worst case scenario. Well, I, I've never seen the teleport before, but what was the uh, incantation the movement there was? And I'm going to pull out my notes and I'm just going to start writing stuff down if he's willing to share. He's not. Ah. <laughs> Can I remember any of it well enough to write? Not it? really. No, it kind of came okay. out of nowhere. Okay, just very quick. Hmm. I mean, he barely made any motions. Like he just cast okay. it. It was okay. a sudden shunk. You could say it was subtle. Ah, I see. Um. Well. Steve's interested in something, but I don't think it's valuable to the actual <laughs> movement of the story. Well, what do you, what do you want to do, man? As uh, what are you doing at this moment? Standing very awkwardly. <laughs> Classy act. All right. <laughs> so He's, he has no idea what to do. So you said about the uh, was it the celestial plane having overlap with our own? Well, I mean, all all the, all the planes have overlap with our own. But you said specifically about not being able to play with that. Oh. Well, so there's extra dimensional, right? Which is like external to our plane. And then we've got interdimensional, which is like all the little mini planes that are within our plane. And in some ways, everybody that follows a, a deity ends up, you know, assuming they have enough faith and are dedicated and whatnot, they end up with a little bit of the deity's home plane, as it were, sort of as a mini plane within their soul. And that's how you see, you know, clerics and whatnot doing the whole necromancy thing. You know, bringing people back to life and whatnot. It's all necromancy to me. I don't know why they make a distinction. Like, oh yeah, bits aren't falling off that one, but he was in the ground a week ago, wasn't he? You look very thoughtful there. <laughs> well, um, I guess we'll come back tomorrow if our friends don't turn up, if that's okay with you. Oh, by all means. And, uh, yeah. It's nice to have a bit of company, to be honest. Most people get put off by the stairs. I'll be honest, they make me nauseous myself, but I've got tablets. Uh, tablets? What, uh, you've got stone tablets that help with that? Uh, it's, it's very strange. If, I don't know why I you'd just, want to make them out of journal. stone, but I guess you elephant people are a little bit different, aren't you? Uh, I normally just journal on a, a stone tablet if we're saving it in our villages. Uh, with like a hammer? Yes, tablets, yes. Uh, a stone tablet, huh. as you said. What, what magical incantation on a stone tablet do you have that helps with nauseation? 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 Is that a word? Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's siblings. I get it. So, uh, well, I mean, it's 
but he, he pulls out like a little pouch and he opens it up and you look inside and there's these uh sort of like long capsules that are like this this kind of this kind of length you know you just uh swallow one and then uh you know you're less likely to throw up sort of how it works and what how are they just constructed these these uh you call them tablets the, those capsules there not not my department not your department no i get them from a, an apothecary in in you know down on in town ah well i mean technically they deliver them to me but you know same thing they don't do the stairs though i meet them at the at the door that's why it took me so long to answer, by the way. Sorry sorry for that. I was in the office, you see. Okay. I... Well, thank you for your time and attempting ah. to, I, I guess, send us somewhere that I... Well, I didn't expect it to happen straight away. Well, I did say I was gonna. You... It was sudden. You you literally asked me. Not always when you ask for something. So oh yeah, it's so ask. it's so impolite, isn't it? When somebody asks for something, you know, you ask somebody for something, and it's just it's very rude of them to immediately give it give you what you wanted, even though it takes up oh like fifty percent of their energy of the day. I wasn't implying that it was rude, it was just unexpected for you to be so giving. Oh, so you were just asking and assuming I was going to be an asshole. What is it, the horns? Is it because I'm a tiefling? You got a chip in your shot? Have you met my brother? I don't know. I don't think I've had the pleasure. Yeah, well, he's the one with only one arm. Twat. <laughs> well... No, it wasn't because you were a tiefling, just not many people. Yeah, good, don't judge by looks, you know. Half the day's energy for, for strangers. And... Well, I mean, I'd met you already. And honestly, I've seen stranger than you. That's fair. I'll... Thank you for your time. I'll see you later. Asdar. Asdar. <laughs> you <there>, your boy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> slipping through the book that has nothing on the pages. <laughs> yeah, what's up with the book? Are you still just holding it, or? Um, I was just gonna use it. <laughs> you were gonna just put it down on the floor. I was gonna, yeah. I'm, I'm just gonna throw it down very dramatically. As like soon as it up. hits the floor, it flips open to those middle pages, and the door shoots out, and a guy stumbles out. And goes, Fucking finally! <laughs> please, please tell him he's been gone for like twenty years. You know how annoying it is to be stuck in the records room. <laughs> I don't know who whose voice is whose anymore. I'm, I'm all over the place today. <laughs> oh. oh my god! <laughs> I found the name that you were looking for. Hi. Where are the rest of you? Hang on. They also Where found the name. Wait, this is interdimensional geography. What are we doing here? You were looking for extra dimensional geography. <laughs> Did you get lost? I thought the staircase was a dead giveaway. Uh, no, 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 no. We've been we've been studying here for the last five years. It's been a while since we've seen you. For f five. For five. Oh my god. Five. <laughs> But there's not yes, supposed is, to be a I, time I, I, slip on this. It's supposed to be real time. Oh, don't tell me they fucked it up again. Hang on, this is your department. And he looks at the tiefling. <laughs> oh, I can't breathe. Donna Shirara, what have you done, eh? You fucked up the records room. Like, no, I, I, I haven't touched the records room once. You gotta calm down, Archie. It's not that bad. 
Um, question. <laughs> it's not been fi- it's not been five years. These these folk just got here. I don't know how anything works. It's very confusing. They're very surprised when you give them stuff that you asked for. <laughs> oh. Have a nice oh, day. you lot are and just cunts, son. <laughs> uh, so, is the guy stepped out of the doorway? Is it like still open? Is he still like standing on the book? I uh, know. He steps out. He stepped out of the doorway, and uh, the book shut again. <laughs> I'm gonna pick up the book very. <laughs> No, he puts his foot on it. You leave that alone. <laughs> you can't just carry around doors that people want to use, all right? He's just going like, to... Have you never read the small print? If a creature is carrying it, doesn't work. <laughs> Since he leaned down to like pick it up. But he froze as he started saying no. He's just kind of frozen, like kneeling down, looking up at him. That's a bit of a weird position you've got yourself. You can stand up, stand up. <laughs> I'll stand up. All right, Eshelora, we're trying to get these people to extra dimensional geography. I, I know. I've already sent two of them. Well, why didn't you send all of them? Oh, these ones they they didn't they didn't accept the spell oh that was all you wanted you didn't want anything else what what are you doing here then knowledge. well i mean the knowledge that you asked for was well, extra dimensional where are they at the moment oh they're over at the uh astia parete paidea and uh you know i'm a dory huh is that so? <laughs> and you send them to Imadori? Aye? Did you, uh... Did you do the paperwork first? No. Oh, no. <laughs> You're not supposed to teleport into Imadori. <laughs> you have to do the paperwork first. There's, they've got a landing pad. Where, where did you put them? Oh, right in front of, uh, you know, reception at the Astia Pirate Paideia. You know, they've got that uh, that circle inscribed that... Oh, you mean the one for emergencies? <laughs> well, I mean, it's going to be very funny to when uh, they figure out... Um, uh, uh, mm-hmm. Well... So, uh, anything else I can do for you folks today? Uh, sure. Sorry, what was the name of the little district we was wandering around looking for the map maker in? Gatlin. Gatlin. Uh, there is one other thing that's puzzling me. I was told there was a map maker, m- map maker in Gatlin, and we could not find him, or her, or whoever, whatever it is. Down in the do uh, any, down do in the any? city. Yeah, Stone City. I don't know. Uh, what about you? Ash, when was the last time you were down there? Oh, um, let's see. What month is it? Anyone? <laughs> no? <laughs> Nobody knows? <laughs> I don't know then. <laughs> you know. <laughs> no, no I, I don't know. Um, I mean, we've got the cartography departments here. You know, we've got interdimensional cartography. They're all right. And extra dimensional cartography. They're all right as well. If I'm honest. Most of extra dimensional geography is pretty alright too. Well maybe it would be worth a visit to one of the one of the two cartography departments. I mean, unless you guys just happen to have maps of what well, this plane and maybe the Feywild available for us. I don't think you really understand how the Feywild works, lad. No. <laughs> Not a clue. <laughs> 
Yeah, well, I mean, uh, you ever seen a sandstorm? When I met one once, he was quite the rude guy. Um, but no, yes, of course I've seen a stand, sandstorm. My village is practically in a desert. Desert. Yeah. A cheesecake or a trifle? Ah, uh, well, <laughs> it was often a mess out there, so I'd say it was a trifle. <laughs> <sighs> well, you know. Sometimes the largest acts are mere trifles to another. But uh, yeah, if, so if you imagine a, you tried to draw a map in, in a sandstorm, that's basically uh, what a map of the Feywild would look like. And it would be about as accurate after, you know, a day. It's not a, it's not a linear place in the, the way that... You know? Well, I can't say I've experienced anything but this plane, but I think I understand what you're saying. Hmm. You ever heard of uh, logarithms? Oh, God, here we go. Alex has, but... <laughs> <laughs> Steve, nah! <laughs> no, not, not at all, what? Ah, it's just a tree that makes great music. Oh, for fuck's sake, I, I knew he was going to say that. <laughs> 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 All right, unless you folk need anything, I'm uh, I'm out of here. I want to go back to my my room. I'm... He picks up the book off the floor and <laughs> tucks it into a pocket. Yeah. Um. All right. Great. Oh Christ! What's wrong? He opens the door and he's looking at the stairs. <laughs> And he, and he starts walking forwards with his arms out like this, and it's, it, you're pretty sure he's got his eyes closed. <laughs> <laughs> he bends down, and he's just like, hand, hand, foot, foot, hand, hand, foot, foot. Well, I'm gonna walk out of the, the down those, around those. Stairs. All right, Asda, you following Steve? Yeah, following. Make con saves, guys. <laughs> Great. Thirteen. Come on, script work. <laughs> okay. About halfway across the stairs, Asda, you start to feel that wonderful lunch that Steve made. Uh, <laughs> coming back around for round two. Uh, not quite as wonderful second time round. <laughs> yeah, well, you do throw up, but in this case, you're literally throwing up. Yeah, I was going to ask, where does it go? <laughs> it ca You kind of like, you know, there's a bit of a spray effect because it just catches you so suddenly you're just like... <laughs> And kind of shoot it off the, the line of the stairs, and that just causes it to, to like wrap around and fall. And uh, Steve, make a deck save. Oh. <laughs> what about Archie? He's quite a ways ahead of you guys. Twelve. It's a twelve. Yeah, you 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 hear the sound, and you turn just in time to see this. <laughs> Oh, land on the stairs in front of you. You look up and Asda's just green faced. Oh. <laughs> and the, the vomit just kind of evaporates and disappears, and there's no smell anymore. Then there's a slight smell of peppermint that kind of drifts down the hall. <laughs> you look back and as you stood there, it just. Ah, that happens, it happens. Don't worry about it, I've got it. It's all gone now. You carry on your way. <laughs> sure. Uh, I'll keep walking. No. He shuts the door at the... <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. I think at this point I'm going to crawl as well. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> <laughs> so you crawl through the space that your vomit just was. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but fortunately, magical cleaning. The sedation, it's yeah. a wonderful little spell. It's very, very useful. It's good range on it as well. Yeah. 
So, you carry on your way. And where are you guys going now? What are you doing? Uh, is, there, is, there, is there anything you want to do? We have about a day to burn before we could get off to the others. Uh, he still looks really squeezy, like, uh, queasy. Uh, no, knowledge, knowledge keeps you safe. I, I see. Um, I'm going to start heading out of this little area and back to that temple we was at. I'm struggling to remember anything Asda said that wasn't knowledge keeps you safe at this point. <laughs> like, you might as well be playing a Kenku. <laughs> I wasn't expecting this. Like, this wasn't what. Why am I? How I imagine I would play this character? Well, <laughs> All right. that's what happens. That is what happens. So, uh, you guys, uh, what now? You're going to? I'm starting then. Her taking Asdor back to that temple. Okay, going back to the Temple of Statera, which is at the bottom of Stone Spire. It doesn't take you very long at all. Alasum and Featherin. Yes. You are currently on the continent of Ameria in a magical school somewhere in an office uh, with an abrasive tiefling having a cry on the floor. It's about. Uh, how many minutes later is it? I'll let it, leave it up to Alasum. Uh, Alice will kind of just lose the stack of time completely in this case, so... Sure, yeah, I mean, I'm just wondering, like, from you as the player trip, how long is Alice gonna take before she does something else? Probably until she's podded out of her current state. Okay, at what point, Featherin, do you prod Alice out of her current state? What is prodding out of your current state for you? I'm definitely sitting next to you and talking to you and like it's okay. We can we can get through this. Um, uh, we we will we will find exactly what has happened and and we we can we can sh surely make it better. You you gotta stop crying. Listen, you gotta stop crying. Sorry. No, no, like crying so is good. It's it's a it's a healthy emotional response to what you're experiencing. But maybe this is not the perfect place for you. Cause that guy is a dick. I I really don't know what to do now. We'll figure it out. Fully we'll figure it out. Um I've got another question. Just very quickly. God planes. Is that anything? Do you know anything about that? Planes where the gods reside? Aye, right, sure. Yeah, they're, uh, you know. But, but, well, they're planes. They're, they're a little Maybe bit different that. than other planes in some ways. Because, you know, gods live there and that causes different things. And Wait, did you ask if I can get there? I can't see I know how. Um, so you, they don't really let the likes of me in there, you know? Well, Points at the horns with his demon left God, arm. Surely. And I mean, everybody dies at some point. Uh, yeah, we've got a place called the Hells for the demon gods. Oh, but everybody dies at some point, so you have to... You know, where does your soul go? Hell. Die. That's what you know, I believe. There after, after you, you know, tell your story. What? No, oh, damn it! I really wish I could find someone who knew more about this than me. Knows <sighs> more about what than you? Gotta go. Oh, can you send us back? Uh, back where? Uh, the stone spire. Hmm. What's in it for me? You will get out of your hair. I quite like the company. It's really cheered me up watching someone cry.
It's a cultural thing, guys, you know? <laughs> it's not cruel. It's really right. not. It's just the ultimate version of Schadenfreude. <laughs> it's fine, we can find someone else. Uh, how do we get out of here? It points at the door in the wall to your left. I open the door and look out to see what I see. It's a corridor. Right, where exactly are we? It's been a lot of weird travel today, so... Uh, I'm Midori. Yes, but what, like, actual Amadori inside the pyramid, or...? Kinda. Kinda. How would we get out of this plane? To get back to actual Amadori? Uh, no, you're Is not on another plane. The only that you're... Oh. Yeah. I thought, it's been a bit weird. Oh, I understand. Don't worry about it. All right. Thank you or not thank you because you've been very much a dick and you like seeing other people cry, which is not nice, but still thank you. All right. Bye. Boop. I, I took a listen with me. You can just hear a faint devil's blood. No excuse. <laughs> cool motive. Still murder. <laughs> <laughs> what I say to that? And we try to find... The okay, yeah, so you walk uh, walk down the corridor and um, you uh, get to the end of the corridor and it's like kind of, kind of like a lobby foyer, lobby foyer area with, um, you know, this corridor you went down had a couple of doors. And then there's a uh, just a, a really big window and you look down on Aimadori. And the pyramid's there about, ooh, probably 700 feet below you. So listen. You see a little sky pod go past. <laughs> More problem. We're really high up. Not exactly sure we can get back down. Oh, sorry. Maybe we can find someone. Listen. Talking to me. Did I say something wrong. Did I do something wrong? I'm really sorry. Just didn't want you to cry in front of the guy anymore. He's to enjoy it weirdly, so. Takes all kinds. Alison. We can't hear any Alison if you're trying to, Alison. Alison. <laughs> you are extremely quiet. Well, that's it all. Oh, fast. Now, completely. Oh. So, yeah, sorry about that. That's unfortunate. Yes, so can you repeat what you just said? We're really high up. And I don't oh. know how we get back down. We're like 700 feet up. Above the point of the pyramid that you were on, which was also, by the way, taller than every other building in the city. But we're on top of the pyramid. No, no, you're 700 feet above the pyramid, looking down on it. Ah, okay. Out of the window, yes. We just saw a, a flying skypod go by. Like a little cloud car. Yeah, Alison was just... Um, very passive, just idly following behind the other end right now. C can you turn into anything that flies so we could potentially get back down there? Hmm, damn it. So we do have to find anyone. Someone, someone, anyone, we need to go back down. Is there any exit sign, any signs? That there are not, no. An elevator. Nope. No, I take the first random door. Okay. Roll a D6 for me. Six. Or a six, all right. Let's see. All right, so you uh, you open the door and um, there's a uh, a female half orc there who is um, just looks like to be like they're screwing something into a desk, like they're assembling it maybe. Excuse me. Hello. Um, we're visitors and we really need to get back down, but the person we visited was very unhelpful. <coughs> oh. Different guy, kind of a dick. I have to get escorted in and out. It's just a secure area. <laughs> 
how how do you do that? Uh, well, one of one of the magic folk bring me up here. You know they don't like yeah, doing do the do the do manual do stuff. How do you do? How, how, how do you get back down? Well, they come get me when it's you know day day shift's done. So the day shift done. How how much longer will that be? Oh well, you know, it's about half past five in the uh, in the afternoon. So pretty pretty quickly, I'd imagine. Could they take us with them back down? With you? I, I don't know. I don't know. I need a pass to be here. Have you got a pass? Uh, I don't think so. Are you a contractor? You working? Yeah. You business? Yeah. We, 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 we were just... Why? why? If, you're, if you're a contractor, why don't you... Oh, you're visitors? You got, you got a badge? No. Well, as far as I know, you got to have a badge. Oh, I mean, I haven't met this, met with a receptionist. I, de I deal with you know the 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 guy who's you know contracting out for the uh for the handiwork. You know, I thought I yeah you know it was a surprise to me as well. You know, I thought that uh, wizards and whatnot they would wave hands and sparkle sparkle everything's done, but no, it turns out that they can't be asked doing that even by magic. What are you doing? Building a desk. Oh yes, I see that. Sorry. They contract you to build their desk. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, not just the desks, but, you know, chairs, bookshelves, put up shelves. I don't touch plumbing, though. They got someone else for plumbing. Yeah. I just don't like getting, you know, suddenly wet. It's the worst. Yeah, you know, it's the we skin, you know. Out here and hope and hope that they can take us down with him. Sure. No, yeah, I don't. Amazing. Yeah. I could try to help you assemble that if you wanted. All right. Pass me that screwdriver. Not that one. <laughs> <laughs> There's like seventeen <laughs> different sized ones there. You just take one. Sure. Roll a d20 for me. Reroll it if it's a 17, an 18, a 19, or a 20. It's a 3. It's a 3. Oh! Uh, you know what? I'll just get it myself. <laughs> I like how he didn't specify, like, the the size of it. Seemed obvious to her, so... Yeah. I, I, so I you guys know. hang out there for a bit, and Asda, Steve, you guys are doing what? So we made it back to the temple. Is there anyone around? Uh, yeah. I mean, you you come up, go in there, and you find the, the words. Man, I'm just not on my game today in terms of remembering anything. But this is why we have a wiki. Do, 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 do. Madan! You find Madan. Hey, he hello, are you? It's a bit late to be setting out to do the flowers, isn't it? It's like two o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, just, I just wanted to come back to the temple. Asdar is still struggling, shall we say. And I thought this might be the best place to bring him for now. Uh, a couple of our friends have got split up from us uh, temporarily. We need to burn a, a day's time until we get with them. I wanted to spend some time here myself and maybe see if we could do anything else for the young Asdar here. And uh, I'm going to give him a tap on the back, see if he's listening, <laughs> try and get him into <laughs> <laughs> he's, uh, he's being very grumpy. He, like, crosses his arm like a child. Knowledge keeps you safe. As you can see. <laughs> <laughs> he's had a bad day. He, he does seem to be getting worse, yes. This is uh, this is quite concerning, quite troubling. Uh, Asda, Asda, why don't you just, uh, why don't you just park yourself down on... 
just on this cushion here. Yeah, he's going to flop down on it, still crossing his arms. Here you go, fiddle with this. And just grabs whatever is in, within reach <laughs> on a table and just hands it to you. <laughs> oh, that's just not going to be very good. I mean, we... we um... Where, where did you say your friends were? I didn't. Um, uh, I think they got teleported somewhere. I, I asked about Where? Them. By who? Uh, one when? of the people at Stone Spire. They've gone to see the extra dimension. Oh, I told you to stay away from the department. students. Uh, I didn't touch the students. Just the Well, that's good. You're not supposed to touch students unless they say yes. <laughs> Uh, we we spoke to one of the professors. Got the got the wrong department. Ended up in interdimension, interdimensional uh, geography instead of extra dimensional geography. And thankfully, the prof professor there was uh, quaint enough to send a couple of us over. But it was unannounced, and I didn't accept uh, the spell that he used. Oh. I see. So he offered to send you there, and I assume you all agreed, or...? Well, uh, I said, could he send us, and... Uh... And then when he did, you decided not to go. Uh, his, Old move, uh... not sure how it's paying off for you. His, uh... his decision to do it was very rash. He didn't seem like he was interested, and said, uh... Was it, uh... oh, fuck it, <laughs> I can't remember. He just rashly did it, and... He was very subtle that I didn't even know he was even casting. So, well, uh, I don't know what to what to say. That's but, seems very frustrating. Could could he just catch you up with your friends or? Uh tomorrow he can. So oh, oh, one of those. Yeah, I suppose he's. Uh, you know, sounds like high, high, uh, higher than I anything I'm capable of. Oh, oh my. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, would you like me to send a message to your friends? See if they're all right. Uh, she, I th I'd, actually, do you know what? I think I will anyway because I, I'd, I'm a little worried about Asda here. <laughs> yes, the, he's playing with his toy. Who do you think I should send a message to, Alism uh, or Featherin? I, I, hmm. I would send it to Featherin. She's most likely to act on something. I think. Oh, okay. Uh, I will. Oh, and uh, I will send a message to Featherin. Uh, hello, dear. Uh, I'm sorry to bother you. But uh, it's Madan. Uh, Asdar seems to be getting worse. Uh, don't suppose you could pop back. Well, first of all, bless you. Thank you for the message. Oh, my God. We're in Amadora right now, and we're not perfectly sure how we can get back with a trying. So, good time. No. Anyway, it seems like they're going to be ages. <laughs> they can't. Uh, bloody uh, wizards. The wizards, why? Why must we be cursed with wizards, Steve? It's just. Pluck, pluck, pluck all over the place. Uh. Well, let's, uh, should we make some tea? Who wants some tea? Sounds like a good idea. All right, you make the tea then. <laughs> well, well, Steve's going to pull out some of the tea he had earlier at lunch <laughs> and just, just make some tea. I mean, it's not a big deal for Steve to yeah. make tea. Yeah, He's right? the tea guy. It's like very normal. Why is it people who have tall characters and loving them making tea all the time? So, mm. Featherin and Elism. A little bit of time passes and you get to the end of the day shift. <laughs> and uh, tall characters like tea. I can only think of one. Sorry? I can only think of one tall character that likes tea. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. I've lost my thread now. What was I saying? 
You were, you were saying that we've just uh, we've waited for some time. Oh yes, and then a uh, you you see um, the uh, a, a an elf um, sort of fades into view in front of you. Like he was stood there the whole time, but only just now. Oh, hello. Uh, he, he, hello. Uh, who are you? Oh, uh, we're visitors. Uh, visitors? Have you got Please. badges? <laughs> no, the receptionist to send us up. Oh, uh, he does we're keep doing that. Over. I think it's a bit of civil rebellion, to be honest. Well, he doesn't agree with the badges, doesn't like labelling things. Yeah, neither do I. Why do you label things like that? Well, because then we can tell whether you're supposed to be here or not, and then when we come across you in a room watching somebody build a desk, we know what to do with you. What would you do with us if you had visitor badges when I tell you that we... Well, if you had visitor badges, I would ask why you're in a room watching somebody build a desk, but since you don't have visitor badges, I'm assuming you're not supposed to be in the room watching somebody build a desk, which makes it much easier to know what to do with you. This guy's great. I don't... You ask us anyway what we were doing here, so... Well, you, I can see what you're doing. You're watching somebody build a desk. No, not really. We're waiting for you. Oh. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Why were you waiting for me? How did you know I was going to be here? I um, only just found out us. I was going to be here just now. No, she told us that somebody would come. Oh, so, you know, you're fun. settling for me. No. You would have been fine with anyone. You didn't know it was me. But you're not waiting for me specifically. You're just waiting. I understand. No, we were waiting for you specifically since you are the person with the skill set to get us back down. Oh, mm hmm. Right. Make a deception check. <laughs> I mean, we were. It's technically, no, you weren't because he did ask specifically if it was him specifically. Seven. <laughs> Twelve on the die. <laughs> I'm not going to bother making up stats for this guy right now, so I'm just going to say that's good enough. It is. <laughs> yeah, that really hurts my feelings. Are you ready to go? Yes. Uh, yes, yes, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. Alyssa. Let's go. I, I wasn't talking to you two, interlopers. Wait, you, you're going to take us back down though, right? And the half-orc picks up their, uh, their toolbox and they both fade out of you. Oi! Gonna wait like a minute. <laughs> You're just waiting. Yep, I'm just waiting. I'm just standing there and waiting. Skypod waiting flies past. <laughs> Nothing happens. It hasn't been reported. Nobody comes barging in. I start kicking. <laughs> uh, in this time, Alison's just sat back down and uh, continued to druidcraft the uh, you know, the donors flowers into a small mm -hmm. into an ever growing pile of donors flowers. <laughs> I just. Start kicking shit over. Okay, you're just Especially kicking shit the, over. Just the, having a tantrum. Keep it, yeah, yeah. Like keeping, no, like very obviously and knowing what you're doing, keeping pressing the zero when you're in a, yeah. a you know, what is it called? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand. You know? Yeah, it's it's doing that. Like finding anything that looks precious, like, oh, this looks like it's worth something. Shunk. You keep going. Excuse me. We need to go back down! You're just talking to the air. <laughs> For all I know, this is all supervised somehow. Sure. <laughs> That's why it took them a two and a half hours to notice that you were here when you weren't supposed to be. Nothing happens? I take Alyssa by the hand, go to the next door. No reply. Next door. Until I find someone. No Bye. reply. <laughs> no reply. It's pretty late. Like eight o'clock in the evening.
And actually, it might be later than that. It's kind of hard for you to tell because time zones. Listen, I don't know what to do except smashing in that window over there and jumping. Oh, if you keep going down the doors, eventually you get to one you've already been in. Uh, yeah. Are you avoiding that I mean, door? or I mean, How long do you leave it before you decide that you need to go through that door? <laughs> it's right now. It's either we smash in that window and jump and probably die, or we go back to the devil dude who's been a dick. Just... Well, I don't want to die, so I guess the devil dude. Uh, okay. <laughs> poor girl. All right, we go there. There's no reply. I open the door. It's empty. I wrap up the <laughs> You get the impression this isn't his office as you go through and realize that these are all just like random leavings in a bunch of different handwritings and stuff. Like it's. All right. You know, it's a, it's a, you know, what, what do you call them? Like flexible working space. <laughs> Go back out, close the door, and open it again. Is it the same office? Yep. Nice idea, though. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> so that option is gone. How about jumping? You do that. We can also listen. No, that's not an actual like not an actual thing we can do. We will die doing that. You're practically gods. Ball. Like something that could stop us smashing into the ground when we actually do jump. Right now. Hmm. Then I guess we will just have to. Here. And so, unless you're doing anything else during the evening, you are left in a I mean, floating I office. Like <laughs> nothing else. That I mean, there's do. stuff you could do, but. Like, How creative do you want to get? What is there? There's like doors. You haven't actually investigated anything yet. You've just been banging on doors this whole time. That's all you've done okay. so I far. I open all of the doors and look inside. <laughs> okay, you open all of the doors and look inside. You see uh, several offices in various states of assembling. It looks like um, they've just been like working their way down one side of the corridor and then the other. So like on the opposite side from the side that the tiefling was on. Uh, none of those rooms, like, they just have boxes in with, like, stuff. You know, one of the boxes has a picture of a rabbit on it, and the rabbit is holding a desk. Branding. What can you do, right? Yeah. Yeah. And as you go down, you're like, there'll, there'll a little bit more has been done, a little bit more was being done, and then you realize that, the, you know, like, the tiefling guy's office, um, which is about midway down the hall, it's one of the more recently finished ones, um... Yeah, looks like this is um, an in-progress construction, like this is um, like an extended space that they needed for whatever, like overflow or whatever. Which if people are showing up and staying for two years randomly without mentioning beforehand that that was going to happen, you can kind of understand. <laughs> um, is there any sign of how the boxes came to be there? Like there's probably pretty big boxes. Is there like, I want to search every room for anything that make is... an investigation check feather yeah. natural three so eight eight Alison, are you helping at all no Alison is not in in a state to do much of anything right now understood i'm so pissed off Don't find anything? Not with that roll, I'm afraid. I promised there was stuff to find, but... <laughs> kind of a shitty situation to get stuck in. Your dice have betrayed you here, Shelley. Do I find a toolbox? Anywhere? You do. You do find a toolbox. I... Take the toolbox mm -hmm. into one of the rooms uh -huh. where there are no desks. Uh -huh. Things, and I'm like, Alyssa, 
Can I get back down? I'm sorry I felt you, but I think you definitely need to do something that is a little bit cathartic so so you can get back out of that headspace you're in right now. So we're going to build a desk right now. And I start unpacking the thing and okay. we're going to build desks. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and I'm getting a listen to build desks and talk about sure sure yeah everything. you guys go at it with gusto um <laughs> allison have you ever built furniture before <laughs> no <laughs> have you ever held a screwdriver before i have hold, held things that are roughly screwdriver shaped have you uh, seen a hammer in operation probably okay allison's not the most useful person during this task <laughs> Probably neither am I, but <laughs> I think I you're think not I royalty, so I think you've probably got more likely of ha- likelihood of having seen furniture being built before. Yeah, maybe. I'd, I'd, I think there's also a little bit of an age difference there that might contribute to that too. <laughs> I definitely saw someone build furniture in my life. Probably. Yeah, right. Uh, right. I sure how it's done. And yeah. Like, oh, then you have to like really screw it in and give make sure that it's tight so it doesn't fall apart again. Make a teaching can... roll. Oh wait, wrong system. <laughs> <laughs> system is that? Witcher. Witcher. So... <laughs> <laughs> There's a teaching skill. There is in Witcher. Yeah. You can teach somebody what else. Do do? It's actually one of the yeah. main. That is probably the easiest way to level up. I would say. Somebody just rang my doorbell. Oh wow. Well. Right, but... Okay. So, well, I mean, the person who is most interactive in this scene just left, so... Yeah, it, I, I imagine... <laughs> How are you guys a doing? A lot of trying and failing to make a desk. <laughs> I think Featherin's probably pretty good at putting it together a desk. Like, is this like an Ikea flat pack desk, or is... No. Uh, like, what's the situation like, with the desk? It, it's, it's not like an Ikea flat pack desk. It's like somebody built a desk in the way that desks are built, and then they figured out how to take that apart so that it would be reasonably easy to put it back together again. Oh, okay. So, it's I mean, it's mostly attaching partially assembled pieces of desk. It's not like a desk has many parts, like... You, my friend, need to explore the world of desks a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, that, I was gonna say, that, that, that doesn't sound like time. any desk I own except for the one that I'm sat at, which I bought because we needed something. A desk and my main desk is in a, a different platform. Place. That's what a desk is. Well, that's what my current desk is. My other desk is four different platforms with, you know, a nice curve to it. It has a filing cabinet underneath. There's a nice, nice little cubby hole that I can put my Xbox controller on when I'm not playing Rocket League. It's, it's a great desk. Highly recommend it. Height adjustable. Yeah. This desk is, you know, one piece of MDF and four poles. But, That's what a desk is. But uh, this is also the worst desk that I've had in 10 years. <laughs> Why do you have so much desk experience? Because I've been working for 15 years. Yeah, but like, again, a desk is a desk. Well, I mean, I've worked for lots of different companies. I've owned multiple desks myself. I spend all of my time at a desk. So when I buy a desk for myself, I put a decent amount of time into researching what kind of desk I would like in order to most optimize that time that I spend in front of it. I don't think I've ever bought a desk. I'm still using like a a desk that I don't think it's either mine or like my brother's from when we were children. You know, the way this sounds to me right now is like somebody going, you know, I've, I've never seen the point of buying a car when I have a bicycle. And you it's like, sure, that. a bicycle will do for short distances. But as soon as you want to do anything heavy duty, you really need that car. You know, you say that um, I got my license when I was like 24. <laughs> I mean, I got my license revoked when I was 24, so... No, I mean, you're, you're absolutely right. Like, I haven't done... I've, I've used a bike up until that point. Yeah. So, yeah. That's, uh... So... Well, looks like Shelly is just gone now. Like, that's it. Yeah. She, she must have died. That's the only explanation. That, that door opened up a portal. Oh man, maybe it just shut into a book and somebody picked up the book. (laughs) (laughs) 
And it's got a carry the girl for like four hours. We thought you were trapped in a book. What? We thought you were trapped in a book. Why? Well, we thought you'd opened the door and then somebody picked the book up afterwards. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go back to you because it was my neighbor asking me. Bring it back inside. And that's her. <laughs> what? Come on! What was the point of coming back? Just go, go with her and bring it back yourself. There's <laughs> <laughs> oh, a little impromptu break for us. Yeah. Anybody needs to go to the bathroom, feel free to hop away. Anyone else have snow? Uh, no, some of us live, you know... London did. In a multiple-digit latitude. London... I mean, it already rained, so it didn't set, but we had some snow. It's just rare for us. A bit of desert. <laughs> yeah, it, it started snowing yesterday evening, and today, and today we have like two or three inches of snow. I'm back. Cool. Now we're just waiting for the people who went to the toilet to come back. <laughs> Alex turned off his camera, but I don't know if he's oh. gone, gone, or whether he's just gone. I was, I was gonna like quickly run, but yeah, okay. You can still do that. You can. I, I, I could still run, but okay. So you guys are in the middle of building a desk, and there's a mm -hmm. uh, tutting behind you. Classic D and D. What? Still here what? then? Yeah, well, you weren't very helpful, were you? Can I turn around? Is it the tiefling? It's one? so the tiefling. You enjoying building your desk there? Very much, thank you. You're the worst. No, you're the worst. Oh, no, you will take that as a compliment. You're great. Oh, fuck you. Ha! Can you take us back, please? Take you back where? I, well, preferably back to Stonespire. Hmm. Doesn't have to be your brother's office. Hmm. Please, uh, please, 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 please. I don't know. I don't exactly know what you find good and bad because you're kind of confusing me. What's in it for me? I don't know. What do you want? 20 gold. Cool. There you go. Yeah. Take us. And you guys are uh, not actually teleported. The spell fizzles out and he kind of looks at his hands and goes, oh, That's weird. Oh, shit. I'm a Dory. We need to uh, we need to do some paperwork. Well, either we do the paperwork or I get back my twenty gold, right? I'll Just go do the paperwork. Yeah, thank you. We'll be here building a desk. Ten minutes later, returns. Ink-stained fingers. Uh, Those... Is there a window in this room? There is a window in this room. There is a window in every room. Okay. There's not much point in having an office in a flying building if there isn't a window to look at and see that you're flying. That is fair. I would put a window on the floor. I mean, one of the corridors does have a window in the floor. Alison looking out the window. The windows don't no, open. No, 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 no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's... They don't trust anybody who uses these offices to be ridiculous. <laughs> like, you drop something out of that window, it kills the person at the bottom. <laughs> yes, a certain other wound who has experience with that. I don't know what you're talking about. 
a long way down, a lot can happen. Yeah, so 10 minutes later, Elf comes back in. He's uh, storming around. Stupid forms and make you fill out everything. Who needs to know weight? How much do you two weigh? I, uh, uh, let me look at my description. Mm. You're taking too long, and he uh, just <laughs> lifts you up telekinetically. And it drops you back down, and lifts Alice up a little bit, and drops you down. All right. And walks back out of the room. I feel kind of violated. Do you feel kind of violated? Just looking out the window. Listen. Yes. Why are you looking at the window? What's, what's that? I mean, it's a nice view. I'll go to that. I want to get back you know, to the others. And And then we can figure out what to do. All right, it's done. It's done. Come with me. We might as well take the office as well. All right. Uh, let's go. I think that I'll finish just behind, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's just like... <laughs> that half walk's going to be super confused tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Why does this one just have, Did we like... at least do well on that half? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do you have proficiency in competence tools? No. Nope. Is that a thing? I do have proficiency in Yeah, absolutely, that's a thing. Tools, Never heard that. <laughs> well, you don't play in my D&D games enough. Because <laughs> that's not the first time it's come up. <laughs> I don't think you I play D&D in general enough if you don't know about competence tools. That's also true. Well, it's getting better all the time. So, you, uh, sure, ro roll a d20 for the pair of you. Alison, you can roll at disadvantage because you weren't trying. Roll 20. Alison? It was on your die as well. Uh, the tiger one. That's a six. <laughs> it doesn't want to. Yeah, I mean, half of it looks good. Half of what's done, that is. The other half, like, is clearly supposed to be symmetrical with the first half, and is clearly not. <laughs> <laughs> One of the legs is both. Uh, it, it's like it is clearly it's clearly designed to be to be attached to a specific uh, a specific orientation. It's not. Yeah, I suspect that a couple of the screw holes kind of got masked by the flowers that were slowly growing out of the wood as you were working on it. Yeah. It, <laughs> um... Sprouting a little bit. It's a pretty bit. table. Yeah. It's a very pretty desk now. <laughs> All right, we go with him. Yeah, you go with him. He goes into the office and uh, he um, uh, unhooks. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Um, I thought a little bit about our discussion before. Um, and I didn't tell you because I don't quite like you, but I think it's not quite right to withhold information like that. So I was talking about the Endless Library, the plane of existence that the uh, that the goddess Olorin is adding in. Well, okay. yeah, but you said celestial planes. Mm, no, I'm not yes, sure. you but did. The planes of the gods. Mm -hmm. Well, you said gods. celestial planes. Mm, I don't remember. You might have said planes of the gods afterwards. This. Yeah, true. Well, that's uh, that, that's what we would call a uh, a neutral demi plane. So how would one get there, except for you know dying? That's the the usual method. Yes. No. Nobody's well, ever found a fork to get there. What do you know about it? Do you know more about. It? I know it exists, and I only know it exists because of this one time that I got a planetar drunk. In that astral... the... pub... thing? Bar? Tavern? You nearly got it. Nearly got it. Yeah. I try. Yeah, the Jolly Sailor. There's a lot of sailing in the Astral Sea, Shelley. You shouldn't be surprised that there's a bar called the Jolly Sailor that is frequented by such types. Uh, 
who you can imagine are almost exclusively not jolly. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't know the name before. I do now. Yeah, well, you can't miss it. It's the rock that's shaped like an anchor that spins slowly. <laughs> Did you know there's a bar that's run by centaurs? There's a what now? There's a bar that's run by centaurs and horses, apparently. Near well, fuck, oh, going to, fuck going to Errol Sarah to Yola when we just go there. That sounds great. I know we have to get back to our friends, but if you come with us, we can go there tomorrow then, or whenever you can take us. I'd love to go there. All right. I forgot to ask your name. What's your name? Aislea. No. You know, this is sound, this sounding a little bit too friendly for my liking. Oh, excuse me. Ugh, stupid name. I hate you. Thank Let's you. go. Appreciate that. <laughs> so he pulls, uh, he detaches part of the desk. Like uh, underneath the desk, uh, sort of on his side of it. He, he detaches something and um, puts it in his pocket. And then. And you guys disappear. And you reappear. <laughs> <laughs> no, you reappear in uh, in the the place that you started out, in the middle of the square, um, just in front of the reception building. And he looks around and goes, "Oh, they've rearranged again." Uh, th this is in Stone Spy. This is Stone Spy now, yeah. Okay. You're back at the Apachem Asoteric. Off the top of my head, guys. Trip trip today. Wow, we've been on the other side of the world. Yeah, it's uh, quite a bit lighter here. <coughs> well, let's find our friends. You can stay with us if you want to. I forgot your name again. What was it? You know, because it's such a shit name. Now you're just being mean. No, I'm kidding. Oh, it's Aslia. Oh, Sorry again. Aslia. A E Z L E A. All right. Aslia, follow us. There you go. Uh, no, you're all right. Thanks. And he just turns around and walks into the reception building. What? I thought we were. You hear him go going, Archie? Tomorrow. Archie, what's this eel doing here? Archie? back i'm guessing the other guys are at the bar again i mean time has I'm gone surprised. by i guess time has gone by right. steve asda you've been at the templums to terror for a couple of hours now and uh, uh madan is it keeps trying like different herbal and concoctions and infusions on asda and asda you're starting to feel like a little a little experimented on almost. Like, ooh, what if I try... No, that's a terrible idea. It only works for pit... Well, it's worth a shot. <laughs> so, do you, wanna, you guys want to do anything as your friends are now back on this continent? Or uh, you don't know that yet, obviously. But... Yeah, we don't know that. But I don't know whether you, like, you know, at some point, Madan's going to be like, and uh, now maybe you want to go home? <laughs> so, I'll do that. Yeah. After kind of actively being involved with that experimentation as much as Steve could. Yeah, sure. Uh, make, um, a, um, make a medicine check. A 13. A 13, all right. Make a wisdom save, Hester. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, script is king. Okay. Well, <laughs> yeah, no, nothing seems to take any effect on you, Hester, and but you're you're. 
I think that Asda is probably quite happy with the process because, you know, you're learning, uh, you know, knowledge keeps you safe. And Steve <laughs> is talking about learning all the time and seems to be learning a lot from this process. But also, like, none of this stuff tastes nice. <laughs> and they keep making you drink it. And you keep not wanting to drink it, but then they make you anyway. Because they convince you to drink it and then you drink it and you're like, oh, I didn't want to drink it. Why did I drink it? <laughs> Sounds about right. Uh, all right, all right. I don't think there's anything more that we can try today. But tomorrow, uh, maybe I'll have. A, well, we'll sleep on it, uh, Steve. You seem to be, uh, you know. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll wait with you. I have stuff to do. Come on, come on, come on. Shoo, shoo, <laughs> get up. <laughs> come now, Astar. Um, can I just have a look, like? Just anything interesting on my way out? And yeah, sure, make a perception check. Steve's eye, because he's... I've been here for three times, but it's still something new. <laughs> well, every time I come here, I roll like crap. <laughs> <laughs> Continuing that streak. Yes. A nine. Yes. A nine is good enough to see the guy all that is, uh, stood staring at the... Uh, staring at the Templum with uh, its wings outstretched. And as soon as you walk out, it starts walking towards you. Okay, it's walking towards me. Does anything happen? Steve's I'm walking continue. towards you. It's about forty feet away. And it's just advancing. It's a roughly humanoid uh, shape, pointed ears. Uh, star, is that gargoyle coming towards us? It is indeed a gargoyle. Usually these don't move. Usually these are statues. Yeah, yeah. That's why I'm confirming with the only other person that could possibly see it right yeah. now. A very <laughs> reliable actually source. actually happening. Very reliable Do... witness. <laughs> Do I see it? Uh, make a perception check, Asda. <laughs> God damn, the script is... Well, they've clearly done something, haven't they? Oh, wow. Yeah, there's a gargoyle. And in fact, actually, now that you're looking at that, you've seen this maybe like eight times throughout the day. It just never occurred to you to bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to look over and kind of mm, yes, and stroke his chin. <laughs> <laughs> Still advancing towards you. I'm walking towards it. Okay, you walk towards it. It's walking towards you. You're walking, walking towards, towards it. it. <laughs> Alism and uh, Featherin, I imagine that you're walking, making your way towards the Dwarf's Helm, right? Mm -hmm. Which does take you past the Templums to Terra. And as you're coming down the steps, you see this, uh, the, these from the back, this stone-like looking humanoid with wings out, spread out behind them like the bat signal. As soon as I see the temple, I would also be like, Oh, damn it! Yes, I have received a message! Oh! <laughs> I should have come here the first time. Uh, Steve, you end up a foot away from this gargoyle. And it hits you in the face. Roll initiative. <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, hang on, don't roll initiative just yet, though, because I need to move this onto a different map. And also put all your tokens out. So, uh, that one, that one, that one, that one. Oh, this isn't the right map. Hang on. I had one for this. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, my, everything's rendering really badly today. I don't know what's going on. Uh... Okay. Here we go. Move you all to the token layer. All right. Uh, Very small map. <laughs> it is quite a small map, but it's uh, intentionally so. Uh, this is the 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 templum. 
to the Terra. Uh, so, and this is the direction that Stone Spire is, which is very annoying. So I'm just going to have to extend this out because you know this isn't exactly how I saw this going down. You know. <laughs> Sorry. Don't know. Don't know why that is. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we'll have Alisum and Featherin over there. I cannot see you over there. Oh, you there's can't. Fog of war up. Oh, there's mm. fog of. Why is the fog of war? Yeah. What? Oh, okay. Oh, this map is actually bigger. What well, is now? I just made it bigger. <laughs> no. Yeah, there's fog of war up, so we can't actually see what's oh. going on. <laughs> no, I've caught everything can't... with the fog of war. Yeah. So. You know, it's very hard when you don't have a map background to tell that something's behind fog of war. There we go. I'll do right. Uh, so, this is, you walked a little bit towards it, and it came towards Wait. you. Is there, is As there a did map you go here? with? No, there isn't. That's what I'm saying, is that this... This is just white, right? Yeah, yeah, it's just white. Okay. Yeah. That, no, I'm, I'm, yeah, it should I'm be grid lines, here. but uh, let's just turn those to... I mean, I guess they're there technically go. there. Oh, ah. there's white, yeah. Okay. The white looked good on the other map, but you know, this this is not the direction that I was expecting anything to happen in. So, you two are, uh, uh, I see this uh, gargoyle hit Steve in the face. And I or attempt to. So, everybody roll initiative. And I will also roll initiative. And I rolled terribly, which I'm sure is going to go great for me. My goodness, I actually rolled well initiative. Great, thanks, Trip. I have a minus to my initiative. This is gonna be fun. I do as well. <laughs> Wait, no, no, it's not minus three. It is three. It's three after the minus. Okay, so. Uh... Oh God, where's my chicken? There is my chicken. Wait, we've got multiple of people's. Oh, okay. Steve, what did you roll for initiative? A fourteen. Okay, cool. So, that everybody. Cool. Awesome. You see a gargoyle try to hit your friend, who is very distinctive, and even at this distance, you could easily recognize with your insane perception. Um, I think most people could indeed recognize that, uh, could indeed recognize Steve. What are you doing? Oh. I think. And I'll just cast a uh, just cast a normal second level moonbeam on top of the uh, uh, on top of the gargoyle. Okay, you want to uh, ping where that's going exactly? Let's say this kind of action. Uh, okay, cool. Five foot in diameter, so no worries. I'm gonna just. I have a thing for this. There we go. That'll do. All right. Uh, so you're gonna cast Moonbeam. Yep. So if you uh, want to roll the damage on that. Eighteen points of radiant. Eighteen points of radiant. Uh, all right. What's your save? Fifty gone. Okay. Yeah, made that. No worries. I rolled a sixteen. Um, I rolled a sixteen on the die. I mean. Uh, okay. So nine points of damage to this gargoyle as this beam of light suddenly appears in front of you, Steve. And I'll and with that I'll just end my turn. Okay. So uh Steve, it's now your turn. Gargoyle swinging at you. Uh, okay. Um I am um... <laughs> I'm gonna hit it. <laughs> Alright. Good decision. 
<laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna. You're, you're the paladin. That's kind of what you do. I would hope, I would hope that I'd hit something in front of me. I thought. Well, let's hope, right? So I'm gonna go for a two-handed like golf swing mm -hmm. at it. You know, Steve <laughs> seems to be a better like fan of this big golf yeah. swing. Mm -hmm. uh, so does he take a running start? Uh, unfortunately, he's only a happy thing. Gilmore's it. Golf. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that would be so. <laughs> <laughs> Only if I knew the thing was already going to attack. That is a 13 to hit. A 13 will hit. Uh, six damage from the web. Is it a magical weapon? Uh, not at the moment. Okay. Um, and... I can't remember what it's called, but the thing when I hit something that I can do... Smite. Divine, yeah, it's, yes, I'm going to smite it as okay, well. Sure. And I have lost it, and what what, what do I roll? Who remembers? 2d8 for what, for a first level smite. First level, okay. Cool. And a 1d8 for every slot above that. Plus 1d8 for every slot above that. Okay. Ooh, uh, very nice. Yeah, the divine so light so shines nice. through the blade. Through the, the hammer, even. Very nice. Is that the end of your turn, Steve? You anything else you want to do? Uh, well, can I? So, uh, do I have a second attack? Yeah, you do. Yeah, you've got two attacks. Okay, yeah, I'm going <laughs> to come back around from the big golf swing and yeah. come down on top of the thing, on top of its head. Uh... Ah, uh, that's a natural one. Makes it a five of the modifier. That would miss, yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately. All right. Um, um, Got bonus action still. Uh, I'm you just... You can move. I'm going to cast Shield of Faith on myself. Um, mm -hmm. Takes a bonus action casting time. And... Yep. yep. Um... And I am going to, yeah, just just shimmer in its face. <laughs> cool. Um, Gargoyle yeah. is going to use a legendary action to make a slam attack against you. Uh, this is 24 to hit. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, sorry, I didn't have enough d8s to hand. Oh, that's a really bad roll. That's really bad. Seven points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. Oh, you mean bad, like... Not bad for us. Why would I care if it was bad for you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good point. Feathering, it is your turn. I will move, right? Was it? There? I will move there. I've lost it again. It's probably over there. Um, Take my... Longbow, mm -hmm. try to attack it. All right. That's a 16 to hit. All right, that hits. I'm getting sneak attack damage. Yes, you are. I'm guessing. Sorry. Um, that's 1d6. I was not prepared for combat. Sorry. Uh, is your bow magical? No. I wouldn't bother. Oh, not at all? Not at all. Well, cool. Uh, so I shoot it and I hit it and nothing happens. I'm you like, you shoot it and the arrow stone. just shatters on impact. And you're like, oh, that's made of stone. I got nothing. I'm moved 45 feet. So as my bonus action, I'm going to do patient defense. All right. Asda. Um, I'm gonna probably get a better angle here and shoot it. Mm -hmm. That's a bush. That's a much better angle. <laughs> I just realized there was a bush. Um, <laughs> that was actually a, it's actually a tree. So a tree. You would have been below. I step it onto it. the tree. <laughs> it's not Minecraft. It's not how it works. <laughs> you can't do that in Minecraft either. You can step onto trees in Minecraft. 
Yeah, you can. You I walk can't around just, on... like walk from the ground on top of a tree. You gotta... Yes, you can. The ground is often at work. the level that the trees are. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, I will blast it. No, hey, right, you blast it. Oh, okay. That is. I really wish that the chat was messed up. Why did they make it? They I they made know. it worse. They made it worse. I think it's just not loading the style sheet for some reason. Uh, fourteen cool. force damage. That's pretty nice. Could have been better. It's a one and a d ten. <laughs> All right. Uh, one and a three. Oh God. Yeah. Uh, do you have a bonus action, Asda? I do not. At the end of your turn, it's going to make a slam attack against the Elephant Man. It's a natural 20. Oh. No. Hey, I've been rolling like crap all day. Give me this. No. This is where it counts? Like... <laughs> ah, so good. Uh, There's 23 points of uh, bludgeoning damage. Damage. And now it is the gargoyle's turn. Great. How is it attacking every turn? So it was using legendary actions. What is that? So a legendary action is basically a thing some monsters have that lets them act between other people's turns. Sounds like super OP. Yeah. Yeah, it's not good when you hear the when you hear the term legendary action in D and D combat. <laughs> that's not a good time. That's that's a oh no. That's the fun. gargoyle is going to uh, disengage from Steve as an action. Oh, it's going to that's fly. Considered. Oh, okay, it's not done. Right over to the far side of Featherin. And it's uh, Lissom's turn. Yes, okay. Oh, Lissom's turn. All it does. Um... It used its action to disengage. I don't think Alison... Anyone near Featherin? That's probably fair. So we'll move up there, and I will uh, blast out a third level Thunderbolt from this square. We can just catch him, but not catch my friend. Uh... Oh, going in, in like a... Yeah. Going like in this it. direction is what you're yeah. saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, going in this, yeah, this yeah, yeah, direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. Like the edge of it is there. Cool, cool. Uh, so, you said Thunderbolt? Uh, thunder Wave. Sorry, Thunder Wave. I could have sworn you said Thunderbolt. I was very confused. It... Oh, okay. Oh. Then I'm less confused. Well, I'm still confused that you said that, but I'm not confused as to why well, I thought I, that you said that. I don't even think there's a spell called Thunderbolt. No, very I thought it was a Pokemon reference. Uh, I was... <laughs> Are you trying to paralyze them? Okay. Uh... So, 50, con con yep, yep. 15, um, 48 down. Oh, I thought it was 48. I was like, what? Ah. <laughs> I wish. Uh, you said it was a con save? Yep. Oh, man, you are not picking good spells for this creature. <laughs> it's his best save. Uh, <laughs> so, it just makes it, my... just makes it with an 11 on the die. Uh, nearly all my spells are con saves. So, ah, that's uh, that's unfortunate. Um, yeah, so, so how much damage was half. it? Fifteen no, half. It would have been so, fifteen. So. Yeah, so half. Okay. So. All right. Do you move your uh, your what's it? Isn't that an action to do? Oh, I think it might be. Yeah, that. Um, that is an action. Uh, all right. Yeah. Okay. And it's only if it so. fails the save that it gets moved, right? Yep, okay. Cool. Anything else on your turn? You don't have anything else. 
End of your turn. It's gonna make a legendary action. It's gonna attack Feather. Disadvantage. Why? Oh, because you took patient defense. Hey! <laughs> nice. So, uh, does a 16 hit you? Yes. Oh, sorry. No, disadvantage. Does a 14 hit you? No! Hey! <laughs> nice. All right. Steve, it's your turn. Fuck it. Okay. Um, so I'm going to take my shield off my back, put it on. Because mm -hmm. I've been hit quite hard. <laughs> um, then I'm going to channel Divinity through my weapon. The weapon's going to start being a glowy boy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, then I'm going to... Can I hit it from next to the feather? Uh, um... Yeah, of course. Yeah, You're within yeah. five feet of it. That's all you need to okay. be making a melee weapon attack. Sometimes I get like bugged by the diagonal. Yeah, don't worry about it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Sacred Weapon, I'm going to smack it. Is your uh, weapon now magical? Yes. Nice. Um, yeah, I'm going to just take a swing. Uh, a 23 to hit. 23 will 19 hit. 19 on the dice. But, yeah. Um, also, and I'll do, obviously, Divine Smite. That hit so okay. Uh, that was just like D eight. Uh, so that's eighteen points of 18. damage. All right, and then get to do it all again. I'm a swing again. Yeah, joys. <laughs> And hear how painful it is to wait in your voice. <laughs> Just roll the 3d8 together if you're smiting again. Ah, oh, that's true. Well, 12 damage. 12 damage. All right. Anything else, Steve? Mm -hmm. Nah. That, that'll do. The gargoyle is going to use two legendary actions to use Mind Blast. Do that. Oh my god. Uh, so in a, uh, in a 60 foot cone, um, it's going to take a step back. Oh no, it can't because it's a legendary no, action. Can't. Never mind. Yeah. yeah, so it's just going to be a cone and it's, uh, it's only going to be oh, able to get feathering in it. Yeah, because it's not degree count, so... <laughs> yeah. Only me! Only you! Only you! Uh, if you could make an intelligence save for me, please. Intelligence save? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yes. Sure. Intelligence... 15. Well, you're just so lucky, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I got a good, it's like... Exactly, incident. exactly what you needed. Oh, damn. Wow. I got yep. a plus five on that. Yeah, the, you avoid being okay. stunned now. It's super annoying. Uh, <laughs> but it's still 20 points of... Sorry, 10 points of psychic damage after the halving. 10 points of damage. Mm -hmm. Ow. Featherin, it is your turn. Since that thing is made of stone, and I saw that my arrows definitely didn't work, mm -hmm. and everybody switched to magic shit, mm -hmm. I'm gonna disengage with my bonus action. Mm -hmm. and I'm gonna <laughs> hit it with your bow again. <laughs> there are other options that don't deal damage in situations like this. Just throwing it out there. I don't wanna get. I got nothing though. Fair enough. I can only, I can like, I'm, but it's just gonna be its turn and it's gonna move. So I don't know what to do. I don't wanna climb on its back. I don't think I can try to grapple it if I'm not strong enough. Fair enough. 
not even sure it can be grappled, so I'm going to run over there. And actually, grappled is like one of the only conditions it's not immune to. <laughs> well, I wouldn't know. Yeah, that. Uh, it's a solid thing, so... <laughs> yeah, it is, a, it is real. <laughs> it's just also a statue that's moving. Like, it, it's not just, like an air elemental. <laughs> it just took away a quarter of my hit points. Just saying. Oh, that is good to know. And that's it. That was my bonus action on my movement. Uh, oh, for my action, I take the uh, dodge again. Okay, sure. Asda, it's your turn. Um... Keeps standing behind. I'm gonna stand. This is a tree, right? I'm gonna mm -hmm. stand behind the tree. Okay, you stand behind <laughs> the tree. Yeah. Kind of hide behind the log and cast from there. Yeah, no worries. And blast it again. Oh, that was points good of damage. damage. Damn Ten it! Points of damage. Well, that's good to know. It is over a threshold. Uh, it has no legendary actions left. So, uh, Asda, did you have any turn? Did you finish your turn? You have got I'm anything done, else? Yeah. Okay, cool. So it is now the gargoyle's turn, and it is going to fly straight at Featherin again. Wow! It does not like you. Why? You can take an attack of opportunity if you like, Steve. All right. Yeah. Fifteen to hit. Yeah, that'll hit. Sixteen damage total. All right. Uh, then it will take its turn, and it'll attack you twice, Feather, at disadvantage. What do you want from me? I think he just wants you to play uh, your backup character. That's an 18 to hit. I'm not going to be able to continue to play, so I'm just, I think he's trying to kill me. <laughs> and a 14 to hit. Does a 14 hit? A 14 does not hit. What was the other one? An 18. Oh, yeah, that does it. <laughs> um, that is a really nice roll. That is 23 points of damage. Holy oh shit. Yeah, I know. That's as much as I rolled on the crit. I'm really mad. Are you up? Yeah. <laughs> Just <Okay>. about. <laughs> Just barely. Allison, it is yeah. your turn. Okay. You don't like where this is going. So move up there. And uh, let's just try to third level Thunder Wave him just away again. Okay. Um, where are you putting this cube exactly? I can put it so to go. Oh, that is wrong too. But to go to it. Uh, uh. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah. All right. Con save for it. It made it. Well, it still takes the damage then. Oh god, I cannot roll push on this damage. Uh, 12, half to 6. Alright. Is that the end of your turn? Uh, yep. The end of its, uh, at the end of your turn, it uses a legendary action to make a slam attack. Oh, I didn't recharge on the... Hang on. Ooh. Scratch that. Featherin, if you could make an intelligent saving throw for me, please. Is it mind blast wow, you really again? Just has something against Dirty you. Dirty twenty. Dirty yes. twenty. Yeah, Nicely. but I only done. have five hit points left. That does make Oh, sense. that's not good because this is forty-eight plus four. <laughs> well, it's gonna have a new target now. I mean, it's forty-eight plus four. It's and I rolled really damage. well on the damage there, so that's like ooh. Uh, I'm 15, damn. 20, 25, ooh. Uh, Twelve points of damage to you. It doesn't matter, like, he's down. And Featherin. They, they this clawed stone hand comes flying through the air, and you're trying, you're doing your best to dodge, but... but Why are you away from me? Then, then Allison comes up behind, and 
makes a huge noise and it, you can see that the, the creature is vivid, visibly shaken and there are bits of it falling off and it looks at you at the end of her turn and is the last thing it does before it crumbles to dust you see oh. a third eye open in its forehead and you see an eye that a, a, a flesh eye within the forehead of this creature <laughs> and it the eye, your your gaze is lost in it, and your brain breaks, and you fall to the floor. Everything is dark. There's silence, blackness, emptiness. There is nothing. It's not right. There should be something. You know that there's something. You know there is. You're sure of it. You've always been sure of it. You've known, almost your whole life. And then, scratching of a quill on paper. You see scrolls around you. You see a figure at a desk. They look up and they say, you are not ready yet. And they point. And you're blown backwards through the door and you wake up on the floor. And your hands are glowing a little bit. You're back at full HP. <laughs> what? What? The golem is ash. On the floor. Gravel. Maybe a better word for it. Shattered by the thunder wave. The fleshy eye rolling loose and down the hill. Rolling with intent. Like it's... It, you see it curve around a rock and then continue rolling. Where is it rolling towards? Just away yeah. from you, all of you. Run after it. You run after it. You're way faster than it. There's Wait. no way you can <laughs> catch it. I have questions. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> oh there you are. Uh, oh, hi. <laughs> yeah, there, you you get to the eye, and it's staring at you. Oh wow. Okay. Sorry, I was reacting to your dog. Yeah, there's a dog. <laughs> I just saw something something fluffy. Yeah, it's a dog. That's. Yeah. Um. I'd like you to make another intelligence save, please. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, that's only a 10. Oh, dear. That's not good. You did go back to full HP, though. So, you know, yes. there's that at least. Oh, that's <laughs> landed in the other dice tray. Doesn't count, though. Even though it was a 7. Ah! All right. That's uh, tw uh, 23 points of psychic damage to you. And you are stunned for one minute. And the eye sort of, it's, you're, gri you're gripping it in your hand, staring at you, and you, everything f locks up. And it just kind of <laughs> out of your hand and rolls away. Uh. Do I see that? And then suddenly, Featherin, you remember about whew, maybe 600 years that you don't remember living. Uh, I wanna, I wanna mage hand the, the eye, grab it. Uh, it's more than thirty feet away from you at this point. Where is it? Where is it? It's not on the map. Like we're kind of past a map situation. We just had a monk use their full round to chase after the thing. You think that it's still within range of mage hand? <laughs> what is the range? Thirty. Feet. What, what's your maximum move uh, speed, Shelley? One hundred and thirty-five feet in a oh. round. Yep. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> so, I don't think you can even average blast it at this point. <laughs> Featherin is quick. Not as quick as my <laughs> monk, but quick. <laughs> well, your monk is three levels higher and has boots of speed. So. So. Featherin. You unstick as everybody catches back up to you. Your brain is exploding right now. Yeah. 
You used to be a mother. You remember raising children? Yucky. Little orcish children. You remember the feeling of tusks in your mouth instead of full set of elvish teeth that you have now. You remember being short. Being shorter than everybody else when you were a halfling. In fact, actually, you were a halfling twice now that you think about it. You're all leveling up. <laughs> are, you, are you okay? Huh? It's at this point you remember seeing all the scrolls. Every time you've seen them. All the times you've heard, you're not ready yet. Where are you? You don't know, and we're never going to find out because you're leaving us. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> Sorry. But that's where we're going to end today's session. Note. Yeah, I don't really I don't really have any way to go from here to where I would like to be, so we're just gonna stop now before we ruin it. Fair enough. And then Yeah, I'll let you you can tell me what Featherin's gonna do once you've had time to mull over the bombshell that I just dropped on you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, man. It's pretty it's pretty clear what's happening, right? You know, past lives, scroll. This is this is Elder Scrolls. She's this is a dragon board right here, right? <laughs> That's what's happening. Yeah. Uh, I'm not the kind to write crossover fan fiction. <laughs> <laughs> we'll still back on Doggo. Who yeah, scrolled the dog. <laughs> What's the dog's name? Uh, it's Maui. He's Maui, the like best. the god. Maui's yep. the best. So cute. He's the cutest. So now he keeps you safe. I mean, uh, as someone who has a, uh, who also has a dog, I will. I am legally obliged to disagree with you. I also have a dog, and I still agree that Maui is the best. Ha, see, I don't have a dog, <laughs> but all dogs are cute. Rusty's great, but Maui is just Maui. Uh, not that long ago, you were still disagreeing. I was only disagreeing because it annoyed you. But now there's so much less time for me to annoy you, I have to be nice to you. Fuck <laughs> oh, <damn> it. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> so, uh, in case you haven't gathered, uh, YouTubers uh, in the year 2041, Shelley got a, uh, got a job in February 2020 <laughs> that meant she had to leave the stream. <laughs> <laughs> at least yeah. temporarily so yeah we'll Sorry, see guys. what happens with Featherin next week and the rest of you crazy cats but uh i think we may have to take a week break while i find more players <laughs> yeah so everybody say bye twitch bye, bye twitch. goodbye twitch <laughs> <laughs>